Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Becomes the Legendary Pokémon Master together with Rhea's Grimory Part 4. Before we start please go support Andres Felipe Solano Say for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this Issei is a male in this story. Chapter 26. Ruby and Sapphire. Shock. Rhea's. Aya. The battle between Groudon and Rhea's had begun, Groudon's big hand was crushing Rhea's into the ground. Groudon. This human is interesting, to think that I put great force into my blow, and she didn't die crushed. Rhea's. This guy is very annoying. Why? Be careful, Groudon has not yet begun to exert his full strength, he is currently fighting you physically. Rhea's. Well, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Immediately Rhea's energy shot up, hitting Groudon's hand causing it to retreat. Groudon. He was able to make me retreat, not bad, however that won't be enough to defeat me. The temperature around him began to rise. Rias. It's like a living volcano. And. Be thankful that you can resist by my power. Rias. Despite its enormous size I can't find any weaknesses. And. Its primeval state really is worthy of admiration, that being said you can't stay on the defensive with Groudon. Rias. I know. The others took care of the aftermath of the battle, not allowing even a tiny stone to leave the combat zone. The Keno. Do you think Rias can win? Isaka. He certainly has a higher success rate than me. The Keno. Because of his immunity to ground types. Isaka. No, because of its high resistance. The Keno. What do you mean? Isaka. Dragonite is weak to rock type, and Aveltal is the same. The Keno. By chance. Isaka. It's like you think, in the arsenal of a Pokémon like Groudon, there must clearly be rock-type attacks, if they hit me they can knock me out instantly, but if they hit Rias who has a legendary Pokémon, at least she resists the first attack. The Keno. Wait, so your main reason for leaving Groudon was because of the resistance. Isaka. It was one of many, but yes. The Keno. But that doesn't guarantee Rias victory. Isaka. That girl learns quickly, this fight can polish her combat skills. Shock. Low. Shock. Rhea's claws attacked Groudon's body, however, he noticed that as he approached, the temperature was getting higher. Then the ground became a river of lava. Rhea's. This doesn't look good. Groudon. Past power. Why? Rhea's. Dodged that quickly. Immediately rocks rose into the air, hundreds of them and all of them went towards the estuaries. Rhea's. This looks bad. Burst. Shock. Burst. Rhea's began to destroy the rocks, but there were too many, immediately they came into contact with Rhea's. When that happened, she was carried to the ground, buried by hundreds of rocks. Groudon. It seems that this battle will end faster than I thought. Immediately Rias shot up into the sky, she was badly hurt, her arms were even shaking. Rias. Spits blood. Why? This is bad. Rias. You don't need to tell me. I hope Issei is doing better. With Issei. He had returned to his fight against Zenovia, Luja returned to his body almost immediately. Issei. Thanks for holding on. Luja. You're welcome. Zenovia. You're back, so you're ready to face your destiny. They say. Zenovia wait for me a little, I'm going to save you. Luja. Do you know how to stop her? They say. Yes, but unfortunately I will need to get closer. Luja. That doesn't sound right. Shock. At that moment the two exchange blows, Issei's eyes narrowed. On the other hand, Zenovia also narrowed her eyes. Immediately, high-speed exchanges of blows occurred, which seemed to shake the sea and the skies. Issei. Zenovia I know you don't want to do this. Zenovia. I don't know what you're talking about. Issei. Of course yes. After all apart from Arena, I was the only one who knew you well. Zenovia. What? Aya. Zenovia started shaking her head from side to side. Issei. You must come to your senses, free yourself from Kyager's grudge. At that moment Zenovia's body lit up briefly. Urquaza. Quickly get close to her. At that Issei grabbed both of Zenovia's arms. Luja. Whatever you have to do, do it quickly. Urquaza. Luja is right, she could enter the primal state transformation. Issei. I hope this works. Zenovia. Let go of me. Immediately as soon as their eyes met, Zenovia's body was paralyzed, and Issei's body was paralyzed. Then everything started to go blank, then Issei visualized himself in another place. I was on the shore of a beach, the blue sea was gigantic and seemed to have no limits. Then a woman was seen next to him, this was Zenovia, who seemed to be asleep. Issei. I'm sorry. Quickly a large Pokémon came out of the sea, it slowly approached Issei. Iger. It's been a while Hyodo Issei. A long time. A long time. Issei. Yes. Iger. 
you are human and yet you have become very powerful such as the degree that you can enter the mental space of others. They say. Certainly. Although it is not easy to do so. Iger. That's what I see. They say. Give me back Zenobia. Iger. Because I would. They say. Please. Iger. Look at you. Asking for things nicely, if the you from the past saw you he would laugh. They say. What I did. Iger. You're going to tell me you didn't know what you were doing. They say. I was just blinded by revenge. Iger. You humans always make excuses for your bad deeds. They say. You will tell me that you were innocent, you ate someone I love in front of me, my reasons for killing you were more than justified. Iger. Maybe. But this war between you and us, there was no peaceful path. They say. We never wanted that war. Iger. You think so, in my opinion humanity is very violent. They say. You fell from the sky, our worlds merged, we could not react peacefully with unknown beings, humanity always fears the unknown, and honestly you don't look friendly Kyager. Iger. Certainly, but humanity did not even value their own world, they chose to destroy it with their weapons. They say. That decision was not in the hands of humanity, but in the hands of a group of people who make decisions for the entire population. Iger. I can't understand it, why should other people decide for you? They say. Some things are complicated. He sat next to Zenovia, staring at her sadly. Iger. You cannot last forever in another's mind space without their permission, otherwise you will die. They say. I see. Iger. You have two options, beat me in this space or wait for that human to wake up. They say. You know honestly it's enough. Iger. What? They say. From this I'm going to opt for a peaceful means. Iger. Then you will die uselessly, it's a shame. They say. I will trust Zenovia. Iger. It is impossible for her to wake up, that human has returned to life with me, by returning her so suddenly it caused an incomplete contract to be made between her and me, consequently she cannot digest my emotions and will be like this permanently. They say. I know Zenovia, she is a bold, direct woman and she never gives up. Iger. What can a poor human soul do? They say. More than you can imagine. That Adisei gently touched her face. Iger. It's admirable what you're trying to do. If I think about the bloodthirsty you and the one from now, I could even say that they are two totally different people. They say. Zenovia. I don't know if you can hear me. I have a lot of things to tell you. So while we're here. I'll tell you slowly. At that point Issei began to tell her about everything she experienced since she left. With Esuris. She was fighting fiercely, Groudon was showing no signs of stopping. Groudon. Clearly my previous attack did a lot of damage to you, of the people here, you clearly have the greatest advantage so to speak, however you will not be able to do significant damage to me. Rias. Yes. Browden. What's that smile for? If you lose, your life will end. Rias. I'm not going to die. Otherwise a say would be sad. Browden. I don't understand what that human has done to make you have such devotion. Rias. Love me. Browden. Anyone can love. Rias. But not everyone can love you sincerely. Browden. She is human, even on the verge of death, her eyes show a burning passion to fight. Rias. Smiles Issei told me to be careful when using that. But with this guy there will be no problems if I use it. Eveltal. I'm going to use the devil's claw. Why? I guess we don't have many options. Immediately the red energy began to envelop Rias' hand from him. Browden, seeing this, felt danger, he knew that this attack was different from the others. Browden. Anti-air. Rias. Devil's Claw. Rias shot out towards Groudon, who in turn used the anti-aircraft, both attacks collided at the same time. Therefore both parties received damage. Groudon. What is this spit's blood? Rias. Spit's blood. If combat could be evaluated as if it were a video game, then at this point Groudon would have a quarter of his life left, and you would only have one life point left. Groudon. It seems that we are both in a very bad situation, but nothing changes, I have won this battle. Rias. You think so Pokemon weapon sword of the end. At that moment a sword appeared, the sword when placed in the hands of Rias began to heal her. She absorbed the life energy of the nature around her to heal her. Upon seeing that, Groudon's eyes opened and trembled. And a thought passed through Rias head. Rias. What if I stab you or cut you with this sword? Groudon. I can feel that this sword is dangerous, and maybe you found someone perfect for you. Shock. Cut. At that moment Rias appeared in front of Groudon, due to his size hailing to cut or stab him was almost impossible, and Groudon knew it. Groudon quickly used fire wave to burn Rias and drive her away. But it didn't matter, Rias stabbed her sword into her body, holding on to it firmly, she was recovering from the damage of the burn as she was burned. Groudon. Impossible don't you feel pain? Rias. 
Of course I'm sorry it hurts like hell. Browden. Then why don't you let me go? Brias. Because you're still standing. Browden immediately began to see blurry, his body trembled. He knew it, he knew he was going to fall, so he fell, the crash echoed throughout the place. Brias. Win. But the say. He was next to Zenovia, he had finished telling her everything he had experienced. Iger was speechless, he didn't know what to say, but then he noticed that Issei's body began to vibrate. Iger. If you stay any longer you will die. Issei. I see. Iger. Is it really worth it? Issei. If I'm going to do something, I'll do my best until the end. Iger. Apparently I have another point of view of humanity. Issei. Which one? Iger. Humans can be interesting. Issei. Thanks I guess. Iger. This girl chose someone very stubborn. Zenovia. I know and I fell in love with that stubbornness. Issei's eyes widened, he hadn't noticed that Zenovia had woken up. Iger was speechless, he couldn't understand the situation. Iger. Impossible. This should be impossible. How did you wake up? Zenovia. My boyfriend was talking to me, naturally I couldn't stay asleep. Issei. Zenovia I. Zenovia's fingers gently touched Issei's lips. Zenovia. You don't need to say anything. You know that words are unnecessary. Iger. How is this possible? Zenovia. Human feelings are a mystery, don't you think? Iger. I see. Issei. You know what's going on outside. Zenovia. Yes. She stood up and walked until she was in front of Kyager. Iger. You know what you're trying to do outside. Zenovia. Yes. And I'm sorry I can't kill Issei, therefore you can finish our contract after all it is incomplete. Iger. Interesting. Issei. I want you to know that we will guarantee your safety and that I will personally take you to the Pokemon world. Iger. There is no need. Issei. What? Iger. I found human nature interesting, so I can forget about our quarrel. Issei. What do you mean? Iger. You seem like you will be the center of many things, and I want to be present to see how you face that path, therefore I will see this world through this girl. Issei. That means. Iger. I want to formalize the contract, you agree with that, Zenovia, right? Zenovia. Tell me one thing, if I complete the contract with you I will be immortal. Iger. Yes. Zenovia. Then I can be by Issei's side forever I don't even have to think about it. Iger. Then go ahead. Immediately in that mental space Issei disappeared leaving only Zenovia, then the sea rose towards the sky, and the water began to head towards Zenovia. The contract began to form. Iger's voice echoed throughout the mental space. From the wide seas to the small lakes. In the infinite oceans. You who will be its owner. You are the one who rules over all the water. The hydrosphere is now yours. Now you feel the seas. You are my companion, and you listen to the song of the waves. Rise from the depths of the sea. Well now you are. The owner of the entire hydrosphere. With Essuaries. She was standing on top of Groudon, he looked at her, there was no hatred in his eyes, only acceptance of her. Groudon. I lost fair and square. Rias. Yes you were a tough person. Braddon. You might not be a bad companion. Rias. I'm afraid you have no other options. Braddon. Haha. The future will be interesting. At that moment the body of Groudon glowed in a reddish tone. Due to the law of capture the contract was being formed. Then his voice was heard. It all started with the earth, the world was formed from the earth. Even at the bottom of the sea there is land. The earth holds everything, there are treasures in it. It expands into each world, creating from small plots of land to large continents. You who are its owner now. You who became my partner. Feel the rumble of the earth, feel the world. Expanding the continents at your leisure. Because you are the owner of all the continents. Chapter 27. Unknown Solved. After the events in Port City, involving Groudon and Kyager. Repairs in the city were taking place, some events were delayed, but the concert is still on for the same day. In fact they rushed the repairs for that reason, for now the girls were talking to Zenovia, they were all getting to know each other better. Rias. You are very pretty. Zenovia. Wow, you make me blush, but compared to you, I still have a long way to go. Rias. What are you talking about? You have a unique appearance. Isaka. I agree. Urquaza. It seems like they're getting along. Issei. I'm glad. Urquaza. What is the meaning of something Issei? Issei. I'm still thinking about this whole situation. Ravel. Clearly this situation is abnormal, but there are no clues as to what caused such a situation. Issei. That's what worries me the most, it was noticed that they had previously entered the place where Kyager's corpse was. Ravel. You imply that this was prepared in advance. Akeno. 
but what do they gain by reviving Groudon and Kyager, and that they end up destroying the city? They say. Maybe their goals were different, but things didn't turn out as planned. Zenovia. I would like to be of help, but I don't remember anything, from one moment to the next I only remember being alive. Kyager. It's the same in my case. Rias. What we can be sure of is that all this was caused by a Pokemon, but I can't imagine how powerful it must be if it can revive two legendary Pokemon and Zenovia. Isaka. It doesn't have to be powerful, it may have a special ability. Issei. It's true. Isaka. Can you think of something? Issei. No, without a clear description of the Pokemon I can't think of who it could be. Ravel. I think we should relax for now, the answer is not going to come from heaven. At that moment a ray of light falls from the sky and hits Rhea's breasts. Laughs. Kaiya. Everyone quickly became alarmed, however when they saw the situation they saw that it was a Pokemon. Issei. Hey. Seeing the embarrassing and interesting scene, Issei understood what was happening. Rhea's. That surprised me. Ravel. From that height, shouldn't he have broken Rhea's bones when he fell on top of her? Isaka. We could say that 50% is due to the legendary Pokemon that gives a lot of physical resistance to its body. Ravel. And the other 50%. Isaka. Those breasts that are resistant to falling. Rhea's. Hey. Issei. I think we found the answer to this whole situation. Rhea's. Hey. Issei would approach the Pokemon and grab it, when he took it he could see that it was still stunned. Issei. I had completely forgotten about you. Zenovia. Who is that? Iger. Of course only he could do something like that, but he should be sleeping. Browden. That means something else is going on. Issei. Girls, I introduce you to the unique Pokemon Jirachi. Hearing Issei's words, they knew they had found the person responsible for all these events. Ravel. Wow it seems that the answer came to us from heaven. Issei. Let's go to a private place. They walked towards the mountains, when they arrived, they waited for Jirachi to regain consciousness. Jirachi. Where am I? Issei. In the mountains. Jirachi. Thanks. He. Wait who are you? Issei. Hi Odo Issei, nice to meet you. Ravel. How nice it is. Zenovia. It certainly is adorable. Ravel and Zenovia began to pet Jirachi. Jirachi. He. Wait, stop. Rias. He looks like a child. Isaka. He has a peculiar appearance. Issei. Girls, stop petting him. Zenovia. Okay. Ravel. Okay. Jirachi. Thanks for stopping them. Issei. You're welcome. Jirachi. You all have a strong energy inside you, have you made contracts with legendary Pokemon? Issei. That's right. Jirachi. It's been a long time since I saw immortals. Issei. I guess it must be true, considering your situation. Jirachi. Do you know about me? Issei. In the past I had the opportunity to hear legends about you, thanks to my legendary Pokemon, your existence was confirmed to me. Rias. Excuse me, can I ask you, how did you end up falling from the sky? Jirachi. I escaped from bad people. Issei. Those bad people made wishes. Jirachi. Yes. Issei. I understand. Rias. What do you mean by wishes? Issei. According to legend, Jirachi is a Pokemon that can grant wishes. Ravel. What, that's not possible. Issei. Believe it, after all Zenovia is proof of it. Zenovia. I see, Jirachi's wish brought me back to life. Issei. Well, more specifically Jirachi's wish was to bring Groudon and Kyager to life. Jirachi. They wrote the notes in my head in advance, when I woke up I had no choice but to fulfill their wishes, but due to the magnitude of their wishes, an adverse effect occurred that destroyed the place where I was, as a result I flew into the sky escaping from the place. Isaka. But in that case you wouldn't have fallen to the ground a long time ago. Jirachi. No that adverse effect also generated a space-time distortion. Issei. I see, for us it was hours, but for you it must have only been a few minutes. Jirachi. Yes. Ravel. But what do you mean by saying they wrote notes in my head? Issei. According to legend, in order for someone's wish to come true, they must write it on a note and stick it on their head, so that Jirachi can read it when he wakes up. Rias. That's why those things are in your head. Issei. Yes. But there are two things that are wrong. Rias. Which ones? Issei. First of all, Jirachi must not be awake yet. Rias. Hey what do you mean? Issei. According to legend, Jirachi is only awake for one week, every millennium. Rias. What? Issei. Yes, I sleep a lot. Isaka. It's an incredible amount of time. Issei. Above all, the week he is awake is the week where the millennial comet passes through the earth. Ravel. You say they are connected. Issei. 
Yes, in fact if you look closely at his belly you will notice something strange. Bravel. Hey. That. Is a. Mark. The Keno. A symbol. Zenovia. It looks like. An eyelash. This a. That's right, it's an eye. There he is. An eye on the belly. This a. It is his third eye, called his true eye, through that eye he can take and use the power of the comet to fulfill greater wishes, and that is the second thing that is wrong, reviving Groudon and Kyager without the power of the comet. There he is. Why? This a. Didn't Jirachi tell you recently, due to the magnitude of the desire it generated an adverse effect that destroyed the place where it was, created a space-time distortion, and I'm sure it possibly caused more disasters. Isaka. Issei is right, the wish brought back to legendary life Pokemon and Zenovia, I don't want to know the effects that will be shown later. There he is. Heavens. Issei. Wishes always come with a price, especially those that enter into the realm of life and death. Bravel. But there's one thing that still puzzles me, you said that Yurachi should end apostrophe t be awake, but since he is. Yurachi. I heard a beautiful song. Bravel. That. Yurachi. Her voice was dot dot beautiful dot dot. Issei. So it's true, you're awake for one week every millennium, but you can be awakened if an innocent person with a beautiful voice sings to you. Bravel. An innocent person. Issei. Good. Pure. Naive. Bravel. It's difficult to find a person like that. Zenovia. Should we look for her? Ingvold. No need, I'm already here. At that moment everyone was on guard, Jirachi looked at the person who had appeared with astonishment, he felt no malice. On the other hand, the girls were serious about the matter, as for Issei, he felt uneasy seeing that girl. There he is. Who are you and what are you doing here? Ingvold. My name is Ingvold Leviathan, I belong to the cow's rocket, and I came to find the Pokemon. Bravel. This girl is strange. There he is. Wait you're Ingvold Leviathan, impossible that's the name of the most famous singer in the world. The Keno. So that means the most famous singer in the world is a member of Cow's Rocket. Issei. Surely some of its members are important people, after all an organization needs active income. Zenovia. What do we do? Issei. I don't know, the times I've met members of the Cow's Rocket, they haven't been pleasant encounters. Rias. Issei is right, normally they use violence more than dialogue. Zenovia. I see, so if she wants to fight, then go ahead. Ingvold. No, if you don't want to give me the Pokemon I understand, I will go back where I came from and give the information to my superiors. Rias. It's that simple. Ingvold. It's that simple. Bravel. Still, why do you think you leave? Ingvold. You're saying you won't let me go. Bravel. You are on the side of our enemy, logically we should not let you go. Issei. Right. I'm going to. But at that moment Issei fell, something inside him spoke to him. The Keno. Is something wrong? Issei. Hey. What? What are you saying? It must be a joke. No of course not. It's impossible. She's on the side of an evil organization. Are you sure? Isaka. Who are you talking to? Issei. But well, certainly if she woke up Jirachi, it's possible, and they fit together perfectly okay I understand, in that case she's not an enemy. After finishing their conversation, he looked directly at her and stepped back. Ingvold. Does that mean I can go? Issei. Yes, but first I want to ask you a question. Ingvold. Of course. Issei. Why do you work for them? Ingvold. To help people. Issei. In what way? Ingvold. We are searching for truth and ideals. Issei. I see. Issei. I see. Things are not as simple as you think. Ingvold. I know that, but I don't have many options. Issei. Listen to me, when the time comes, if they fail you, you can call me, and I will help you. Ingvold. Why, am I not supposed to be your enemy? Issei. I don't like to see a good person fail. Ingvold. And how do you know I'm a good person? Issei. It's impossible that you're not. Ingvold. What is your name? Issei. Hyoto Issei. Ingvold. We will see Hyoto Issei again. Ingvold would quietly retreat, the girls were confused by what had just happened. Bravel. Hey, why did you let her go? Issei. He's not a bad person. Bravel. How do you know that, you barely know her? Issei. A Pokemon inside me reacted to her, then I could recognize the Pokemon she has. Bravel. And because she has a rare Pokemon, she's not a bad person. Issei. In this case yes. Rias. What's going on Issei? Issei. We are probably seeing another immortal person like us. After her words the atmosphere became serious. Isaka. So that girl. The Keno. She is the owner of a legendary Pokemon. Issei. In this case, it is a unique Pokemon. Rias. Just like Jirachi. Issei. 
Yes, she is the carrier of the singular Pokémon, Miloetta. There he is. But why are you so confident that he is a good person, just for having that Pokémon? I say. Do you remember that I told you about Mew? I told you that no one could obtain it, because to obtain Mew you need a pure soul, free of hatred and resentment, that never has the desire to fight to hurt, only to protect. There he is. That's right, don't tell me that Miloetta is the same. I say. Not that exaggerated, but certainly the requirements with the singular Pokémon are tighter. Zenovia. Maybe that's why they didn't directly make a contract with Jirachi. I say. Exactly, the singular Pokémon that has certain requirements, even if you can use a forced contract, nothing guarantees that you can use it well, they are the most complicated Pokémon among all. Isaka. So what requirements must a bearer of Miloetta meet? I say. She must not harbor malice and must be able to win the hearts of Pokémon and humans. Zenovia. It's a bit of a vague description. I say. You think, it seems to me that I said everything clearly. There he is. One thing, she said that they are searching for the truth and ideals, what do they mean? They say. That's not important for now, don't pay attention to it, anyway, once things end here she will leave. There he is. Why do you say that? They say. I seem to remember that Miloetta is from the Unova region. Isaka. Do you think something will happen there? They say. I don't know, but I prefer to focus my attention on what's here, now we must take care of Jirachi. Bravel. Yes, we can't let this beauty fall into the wrong hands. Hirachi. He. You're caring for me again. Bravel. It's so cute. There he is. But I don't think they will stop. They say. We just have to hold on, the week of the Millennium Comet is about to arrive, once it's over Jirachi will go to sleep for another thousand years, it will be difficult for them to find him. Chapter 28. Creator Trio. The week of the Millennium Comet had begun, the girls and I took shelter in nature. The attacks towards us by the cow's rocket had begun. There he is. Another one we killed. Bravel. They come non-stop, it's a nuisance. Isaka. It seems that they are determined to get Urachi. They say. Of course after all, their losses could be solved with a. Urachi. Is it safe for us to stay here? They say. No, but it's for the best, if we went to a city we would involve the civilians, they could even use hostages to stop our movements. Isaka. That's true, but here in the wild, we don't have to worry about restraint, civilians or damage, we can use our forces to the fullest. The Keno. Their forces are not eternal, at this rate they will run out of personnel. They say. Which makes it all very beneficial for us, although I'm worried that they'll try to take another approach. Rias. Do you think they might be plotting something? They say. Possibly. Ravel. Likewise, any plan of yours will be useless against us. The Keno. Let's rest for now, it doesn't look like they're going to send more men. Two hours later. Hirachi. He. Why do they pet me so much? Ravel. It's very nice. Isaka. True. They say. You are literally a cute plushie for girls, only made of meat. Urquaza. It seems like he enjoys it too. Ravel. Look, he fell asleep. There he is. He's so cute when he falls asleep. They say. Sigh dot dot this is going to be a long week. Uja. I think it's been a long day for everyone, you should go to sleep. They say. Forget it, it seems like they'll stay like this a little longer, I'll go ahead and go to sleep first. There he is. Okay. They say would give a slight yawn, close his eyes slowly and immediately fall asleep. In his dream he seemed to be fighting something non-stop. Shock. Shock. Lo. This dream again, I have it every so often, to this day I don't understand it, but for some reason I can never forget it. I never understand what I'm fighting against. It's big, very big. I can only see its shadow. The world is burning. And it seems as if I'm the only living being on earth. That thing has more than eight heads. But it can take human form. It doesn't seem to be a Pokémon, I'd say it's not one. It's the furthest thing from a Pokémon. An unreal being. I notice it staring at me. He hates me. And I can feel that I hate him. This thing. He wants to devour me. At that moment Issei would wake up from his dream of him somewhat agitated. Urquaza. You finally wake up. Issei. What? Uja. Look around. Issei. Hey. He quickly saw that the entire area was engulfed in flames. Urquaza. The girls were worried because you didn't wake up in the middle of so much noise. Uja. We tried to talk to you from inside, but it's like you won't listen to us. Issei. I had a dream. No that's not important now, where are the girls? Urquaza. They were so distracted with you that they managed to take Jirachi, then they quickly went after him. Uja. They knew nothing would happen to you, and that Jirachi was the priority. They say. How long have they been gone? Uja. Two hours. They say. Something's not right. 
Immediately Issei transformed, first putting out the fire and then taking flight to find the girls. Urquaza. I know what you're thinking, with the power of the five of them, no one could face them, the fact that they haven't appeared for two hours can only mean that something bad happened. Issei. Correct. Uja. Then we must be careful. Urquaza. Issei looks down. He noticed how Yusaka, Akeno and Ravel were lying on the ground injured, he quickly went down to see them. Issei. Yusaka, Ravel, Akeno hey wake up. But his words were useless, they just didn't reach them. Ingvold. It won't work. Issei. He. Ingvold, what are you doing here? Ingvold. Seeing how Magnus and Achilles' plan ended badly. Issei. What happened here? Ingvold. Magno wanted the Pokemon Groudon to have control over the Earth, that way he would be unstoppable and could create continents where there were none before, the organization saw it as the possibility of having their own nation, but since Groudon was dead. Issei. They used Jirachi to solve this problem. Ingvold. Yes, Achilles wanted to be the sovereign of the waters, when he had Kyager, he would make the water run through the newly created continent, after all a continent without water is the same as a desert without life. Issei. Basically the organization would gain the power to terraform the world. Ingvold. But it went wrong, Jirachi escaped, and the Pokémon were causing chaos, so when they suddenly disappeared, Magno and Achilles knew that they should have made contracts, that made them so angry that. Issei. They changed plans. Ingvold. If they couldn't have Groudon and Kyager, they would create their own. Issei. Shocked. They are crazy. Ingvold. When I returned and gave them the information, I naturally opposed the plan and just watched. Urquaza. Jirachi can grant wishes, but he is not omnipotent creating life from scratch is unheard of in human words, doing something like that would be blasphemy. Ingvold. As soon as they captured Jirachi, they used him, they knew they had little time, but when they did, they were both consumed. Issei. Consumed. Ingvold. I do an apostrophe t know how to describe it, an inorganic mass fused with his flesh after that, instead of creating Groudon and Kyager they became monsters. Issei. Then they attacked the girls. Ingvold. Yes. But you were lucky. Issei. What do you mean? Ingvold would walk a few steps until she reached the cliff, Issei followed her and then opened his eyes wide, shocked by what he was seeing. Corpses of people and Pokémon, at the bottom of the cliff, dismembered and torn to pieces in a horrible way. Ingvold. Fortunately I stayed away observing everything, I don't think they can differentiate between friends or enemies, that applies to both humans and Pokémon. Issei. How come they didn't kill Ravel, Akeno and Yusaka, seeing such a scene I don't think they would have left them alive because if. Ingvold. It was thanks to your two friends. Issei. Shocked. Riaz and Zenovia. Uja. They are certainly the only ones left to find. Ingvold. Those two seem to have a strange attraction to those two girls. Issei. Sure both wanted to create their own Kyager and Groudon, everything went wrong, and now the fakes seek to kill the originals. Ingvold. What will you do? Issei. These three won't wake up right. Ingvold. That's right, those who were attacked by them, if they are not killed, they will not wake up from their sleep, I am sure that to wake them up, those two will have to be killed. Issei. There's a problem. Ingvold. I can tell you that those two monsters are not Pokémon, their wishes turned them into beings never seen before, by the way those girls seem to have resistance against them. Issei. What kind of resistance? Ingvold. So as not to end up like those three. Uja. Apparently Riaz and Zenovia could be immune. Urquaza. We'll have to see if it also applied. Issei. Let's hope so one last thing, what happened to Jirachi and how did they wake him up to make his wish? Ingvold. I currently have him in my possession, he is asleep, they used a recording of my song, that way they woke him up, I will return him to you when you take care of those two. Issei. I see, thanks. Ingvold. It's nothing, either way the plan failed and I honestly don't like innocent people being harmed. Issei. Don't forget, when they fail you just call me. Ingvold. Thank you, but I am a person who will trust until the end. Issei. Even knowing that they can betray you. Ingvold. Say. Issei. Why? Ingvold. Because that way, I can finally find someone I can truly trust. Issei. In other words, even if you know they will betray you, you will not betray them first. Ingvold. That's the kind of person I am. 1. Issei. You are a good person Ingvold, now I understand why Miloetta chose you, unfortunately good people have the most thorny path. Ingvold. I see. Issei. When everything is over, I hope to see your concert. Ingvold. I will show you a great performance. But those words, Issei would fly away, with the power of Rayquaza he advanced at a tremendous speed, he could see the destruction of his surroundings. 
he immediately managed to visualize Rias and Zenobia, he also saw what Magnus and Achilles had transformed into. Ingvold. I was right, those things aren't Pokemon, I guess you have to be very careful with the wish you're going to make. Magno. Annihilate. Achilles. Fade away. Shock. Immediately Issei appeared in the middle and with a wave of energy, he sent the two flying. Rias Zenobia. Issei. Issei. That will give us time. Rias. Are you okay? Issei. Yeah, I just had a bad dream. Zenobia. More than a bad dream I would say. Issei. Leave that for later, I got time, tell me quickly all the information about those two. Rias. His movements or attacks, I do an apostrophe t know what to call them, are nothing like what a Pokemon would have. Zenobia. They have great speed, strength and reflexes, despite not talking much or saying things that make sense, they seem to be intelligent for combat. Issei. So far how have you felt the battle? Zenobia. They are surpassing us in power, it must be said that we are barely keeping them at bay. Issei. As I feared. Rias. How are the others and Jirachi? Issei. Save them, but if we don't kill those two, they will never wake up. Rias. Even with the three of us here, I can't feel that such things are easy to deal with. Issei. Yes it seems I have no other choice. Rias. What are you talking about? Issei. I'm going to use Rayquaza's Mega Evolution. Rias. What wait a minute, Rayquaza can Mega Evolve. Issei. Yes. Rias. But it's already a mythical rarity Pokemon, how powerful will it be if it Mega Evolves? Issei. A lot. In fact every time I use that form I have to be aware of the damage around, but with Jirachi here, I can ask for the whole area to be fixed. Iger. Then we won't have to hold back either. Browden. That's right. Zenovia. What are you talking about? Iger. Primal form, a unique and exclusive form of the two of us. Zenovia. They have another transformation. Rias. But how? Iger. That form was blocked for me, but it was fixed when I consumed my prism. Zenovia. That blue stone. Iger. Correct. Rias. Groudon, when you appeared before me you were already in a primeval state, that means that. Groudon. Right, I already consumed mine, thanks to those guys. Immediately Achilles and Magno returned, seeing Issei they felt an uncontrollable rage. Issei. It seems they didn't like it either. Browden. You can't blame them. Zenovia. We better get started right away. Iger. Are you ready? Zenovia. Go ahead. At that moment the energy of water would envelop the entire place, a great torrent of water rose to the sky surrounding Zenovia. Rias. We will not be left behind. Browden. That's right. Immediately a wave of heat was felt throughout the place, a column of fire rose towards the heavens. Issei. You're ready Rayquaza. Rayquaza. Go ahead, it's been a long time since we took that form. Then what was felt was a gentle breeze, the sky cleared, with a movement of his feet everything had calmed down. At that moment the three descended from the sky. Rias Primordial Groudon. Rias. I hope you're ready, damn monsters. Zenovia Primitive Kyager. Zenovia. We will finish you off. Issei Mega Rayquaza. Issei. There will be nothing left of you, under my sky. Achilles and Magna saw the three as threats, mortal enemies, their power and attempt to kill Rose. For their part, Rias, Zenovia and Issei were ready to fight, their power had reached an unprecedented scale. After a long time, the creative trio in its maximum splendor had reunited. Chapter 29. The Sky, the Sea and the Land. Shock. Burst. Shock. The battle between the five was taking place. For her part, Rias fought directly with Magno, while Zenovia also opted for a direct approach. As for Issei, he stood still watching the battle, his behavior was strange. Magno. I caught you. Rias. I don't think so. Lo. Rias used a feint and hit Magno directly in the face, but as she did so her hand shook. Rias. This guy is very tough. Burst. Zenovia who was fighting against Achilles, seemed to generate water out of nowhere, immediately the drops of water were like bullets towards Achilles. However, a kind of psychic wall seemed to block Zenovia's attacks from her. Zenovia. I can't hurt him if my attacks don't reach him. Immediately Issei maintained the same posture. Uja. Won't you attack? Issei. I need to observe more. In that form Issei's Pokemon weapon had changed, now they were two seven-branch swords. Immediately, energy began to accumulate in them, causing them to shine. Shock. Magno. I'm going to swallow you. Rias. Unfortunately, I have no plans to be eaten by a hidden monster like you. Shock. Blow. Rias struck such a powerful blow that it destroyed the mountains around her, but Achilles's skin remained intact. But he quickly rode in pain. Browden. 
I see, he may not have external wounds because of his tough skin, but he can't avoid internal injuries from the impact of the blow. Or he is. Then I'll hit him harder metal claw plus dragon claw plus slash plus fire fist. Immediately the fusion of movements occurred, Ria's charged against Magno and hit him fully. The blow was so strong that it caused a deafening noise, the next thing that happened was that an explosion occurred. Magno. Aya. Ah, Magnificent cry of agony, it was noticeable that his pain was immense, when everything became clear it was seen that half of his body had been destroyed. Ria's. Perfect. Ria celebrated his victory, unfortunately he quickly realized that it was not going to be that easy. Magno's monstrous body began to regenerate, immediately Issei, who had been watching everything since the fight began, charged against Magno and cut off his head. Issei. I knew that observing first had been a good choice. Magno's body turned to the east he was headless, and half of his body was regenerating, both Ria's and Issei found it somewhat disturbing. Immediately his head also began to regenerate. Ria's. This can't be possible. Issei. Well things got complicated. Zenovia, who observed that scene for a moment, realized that it had to be the same with Achilles. Zenovia. This is bad, it won't an apostrophe t do me any good to get through his psychic defense if he can regenerate. At that moment Achilles opened his mouth, and a sonic scream came out of it, the sound was so loud that it made everyone's heads shake. They say. Buck that hurts. Rias. My ears. Zenovia. Shut up. They say. We can tolerate it to a certain extent, but if it were a person of a lower level, we would definitely blow his head off with that scream. Quickly Zenovia stood next to Issei and Rias, then she created a dome of water around them, Rias covered the dome of water with earth, isolating the sound. Issei. That will give us time to think. Zenovia. They are truly monsters. Issei. The energy those two emit is not as great as ours, but there is something strange, their energy does not seem to fluctuate. Rias. You mean that it neither increases nor decreases. Issei. Exactly, it seems to be at a fixed point. Zenovia. In that case we are in trouble, if so they can have infinite energy. Rias. Is that even possible? Issei. They may have restrictions, for example they will not be able to increase their power, so it will always be fixed in exchange for having that infinite energy, against a superior power it is clearly a disadvantage. Rias. True, but that doesn't change the fact that our energy decreases with every passing minute. Zenovia. Rias is right, we can be enormously powerful, but if we prolong the fight we will lose. Rias. Likewise, the problem lies in its regeneration, we do not know to what point it reaches. They say. Then from this moment on, let's not hold back. Rias. You say that. They say. Let's release all our energy without worries, we will attack head on with all our power. Zenovia. But we won't give them the advantage. They say. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Zenovia. You thought of something, right? Issei. Smiles. Immediately the dome was destroyed, Achilles and Magnus were in front of them. Rias and Zenovia extend their hands. Rias. Pokemon Weapon Primordial Fire Halberd. Zenovia. Pokemon Weapon Primal Water Sword. Immediately upon holding those weapons, the girls felt an explosive increase in power. Achilles and Magnus looked at them in disgust, preparing to jump on them. The moment they leapt upon them, Rhea struck Magnus and Achilles with her halberd. The contact with his skin created a wave of fire, which continued unidirectionally. Magno screamed as his body was on fire, on the other hand Achilles's psychological barrier was broken, although he was spared from the attack. They then saw the distance they had been pushed, they had traveled a distance of 400 kilometers in just a few seconds. Not only that, they realized that they were not on land, but walking on water. At the strange situation, both of their gazes turned to Zenovia, who with a movement of her sword, made the water turn into sharp spearheads that pierced the skin of Magnus and Achilles. Magno. Aya. Achilles. Destroy. Achilles, blinded by rage, lunged at Zenovia, but at that moment Issei appeared in front of him, immediately with one movement he sliced him into pieces. Issei. I cut the tissues, broke his bones, pierced his heart and exploded his brain, theoretically it would be impossible to regenerate from that with normal regeneration, but I guess his regeneration is not normal. Achilles's body began to regenerate, Magnus lunged at them with the intention of killing, but Rias stopped him. Rias. Don't bother. Magno. Die. Magno grabbed her by the head, but Rias stuck his halberd into her heart and began to set it on fire. Magno. Aya. His body was burning, every breath that came out of him was nothing but fire and smoke, it was like watching a person burning in hell. Magno was riding like an animal, but the attack of Rias did not stop there, fragments of stone began to come out of his body, separating his flesh, his tissues and bones from him. Immediately his body was torn and split into several pieces. Rias. 
even if I destroyed your body to such a level you just regenerate, I guess you can't be considered human anymore. For her part of her, Zenobia continued to attack Achilles's body of her, but no matter how much she attacked, how much she damaged him and how many pieces she destroyed his body into her, he always came back. Issei. As I assumed. Brias. What are you planning to do? Issei. Take them to a place where they can't regenerate. Zenobia. What do you need us to do? Issei. Wrap them in a sphere slowly, I will slice them while wrapping them. Rias and Zenovia followed Issei's orders, Rias wrapped Magno in a sphere of earth, and Zenovia wrapped Achilles in a sphere of water, in turn, he did not stop slicing the bodies of Achilles and Magnos, until both were wrapped. Rias. Now what? Issei. Now I'll take care of it. Issei took the spheres and flew at high speed towards the sky, far exceeding supersonic speed. She crossed the Earth's atmosphere, reached space and continued flying. Urquaza. It's been a while since I saw the view of the universe. Issei. Yes, but I don't have time to contemplate it, I must hurry or these two will break free. Urquaza. Their regeneration is very annoying, even though you slice them many times, they have not been phased. Issei. Yes, currently there is only one way to permanently kill these guys, and that is with a continuous attack. Urquaza. You couldn't do it without resorting to this method. Issei. No, we have reduced them to nothing and they are coming back, possibly the regeneration cannot be carried out if the continuous attack is of an extremely long time, and since we do not know how much time we should attack them, this is the best option. In front of Issei was a gigantic, enormous and imposing ball of fire, its brightness reaching the entire solar system. The great and incandescent star, the sun. Urquaza. Even in this form I can't guarantee that you can survive coming into contact with the sun. Issei. I don't need to make contact, just throw these two there. At that point the spheres began to slowly crack, Achilles and Magnus were about to finish regenerating. Achilles. Kill. Magno. Destroy. Issei. You two die already. With great force he threw the two spheres towards the sun, when they were at the edge of it, the spheres broke, Achilles and Magno looked at Issei, they wanted to kill him. But their bodies twisted instantly, as they moved further towards the sun. Issei. I'm sorry, but it seems I'm the only one of the three who can breathe here in space. As they went deeper into the sun their bodies began to burn, slowly disintegrating, until nothing remained. Urquaza. Those two would have been a real danger to the world, possibly if you weren't there, they would have become immortal monsters. Issei. I am certainly the only one capable of doing something like that, but without Rias and Zenovia, I would have had to fight with them to analyze them, and I probably wouldn't have had the energy to return back to Earth. Urquaza. I would have been able to take you back, even if you had to endure the pain of lack of oxygen. Issei. I'm glad that wasn't the case. Upon returning, Rias and Zenovia went to see the others, while Issei went to see Ingvald. Ingvald. Here's Jirachi. She would give it to Jirachi calmly, but in that Issei noticed that she was wearing a necklace. Issei. You made a wish, right? Ingvald. Say. Issei. What was it? Ingvald. A woman has no right to be mysterious. Issei. Yes, it's true. Ingvald. Well we'll see each other for the last time at my concert. After his words he left, the matter of the cow's rocket was over, Jirachi was safe, the girls were safe. The remaining days passed, the concert took place, Issei watched her sing from afar, from her point of view, Ella Ingvald had a beautiful voice. When finished, there was only one pending matter. Jirachi. I'm glad to spend time with you. Ravel. You really have to go. Jirachi. Don't worry, as immortals that you are, we will surely see each other again in a thousand years. Issei. Maybe next time you'll find a contractor. Hirachi. If fate wants it that way, then so be it. The light began to surround him, he slowly descended to the ground and crossed the ground. Hirachi had gone back to sleep. Rias. Well, I guess we'll see him again in a thousand years. Isaka. Yeah, when you're immortal, time means nothing, it's just waiting. Issei. You said it. Rias. But you know, I feel bad for that girl Ingvald. Issei. Why? Rias. She is with an evil organization that will clearly betray her, but she will not betray her first, even knowing that possibly if they betray her, she is like heading to die. The Keno. True, how can he live like this? Issei. Smiles ha. The cow's rocket is the one who should worry. Rias. What? Isaka. What are you talking about? Issei. Do you remember the requirements to be able to possess Miloetta? Zenovia. To have Miloetta, she must not harbor malice, and she must be able to win the hearts of Pokemon and humans. Issei. Correct. Rias. But why should Cow's Rocket worry about someone like that? Issei. Because that's only half of the requirements to have Miloetta, but I'm sure they don't know that. Elsewhere. 
Ingvold was at the port, she was going to return to Anova, then she lightly touched her necklace. Miloetta. Sure of this Ingvold. Ingvold. I won't betray the organization, not if they don't betray me. Miloetta. Then let's wait until that day comes. Ingvold. Smiles. With a say. A say. Miloetta has two faces, the one that sings and the one that fights. Chapter 30. Ruins. On the beach lay Issei lying in the sand, a Keno would come to sit next to him. Issei. The day seems calm, isn't it? The Keno. I can't deny that. Issei. What do the others do? The Keno. They are at the spa, Rissa especially seems very relaxed. Issei. Well it's normal, we had a lot of problems to solve. The Keno. It's certainly very comforting to know that we're taking care of the cow's rocket. Issei. Yes, but in the end losing their members means nothing to them if they have many, many more. The Keno. The difference may lie in how important these members were. Issei. If so, they will naturally start moving. The Keno. Do you think we should act first? Issei. There's not much we can do with the little information we have about them, we don't know how many there are, who their main members are, etc. The Keno. Then we just have to see if we will meet more members or not. Issei. That's what I'm afraid of. The Keno. But at least these events weren't all bad, you got Zenovia back. They say. Yes, and I assure you that cannot be compared to any treasure. The Keno. You could say that these events allowed you to correct past mistakes. They say. Yes. But there is still more. The Keno. There's one thing I've been meaning to ask you, but it's difficult because it's a sensitive subject. They say. If it is a delicate subject, only two things come to mind, Kunu or Rina. The Keno. In this case it's the second one. They say. I guess you want to know why I didn't use Jirachi and brought back Arena. The Keno. Yes. Issei. Don't think I didn't think about it, but these events taught us that wishes have a price. Just remember when Zenovia came back, all the events she triggered, all the lives that could have been lost, if because of my wish I bring Arena back, but that causes hundreds or one of you to die, I wouldn't forgive myself, plus Arena is the type of person who doesn't like sacrifices in her name. The Keno. You mean I wouldn't tolerate living again at the expense of others' lives. They say. Right, that's the kind of person he is, a very kind person. The Keno. I understand, he is someone peculiar. They say. If you had met his family, believe me, they would leave you speechless. The Keno. Do you miss your old life, I say. They say. I won't deny that yes, on one hand I would be with my family, my friends, Zenovia and Arena, but I won't say that I don't like this current life either, I was able to meet you, Riaz, Yasaka etc possibly without that event you and I wouldn't be here talking, Akeno I am very happy right now. The Keno. Smiles I'm glad to hear it. They say. On the other hand, how do you feel? Living in this time is something new for you, considering that you are from another era. The Keno. I got used to it quickly, Ravel and I couldn't be more grateful to you. They say. With me why? The Keno. Life as priestesses was very mentally demanding, maintaining an image was an obligation, thanks to you we can enjoy the now, added to the fact that your plan saved our lives, you gave us freedom, and that is a debt that we will always have. They say. You don't have to pay me anything, the things I do, I do without expecting anything in return. The Keno. By the way, you could have used Jirachi to find Kunu or find out if she was alive or not, why didn't you do it? I'm sure that wish wouldn't have caused any problems. They say. You're right, but it's better this way, Kunu's thing is very important to Yasaka, if she's out there somewhere, I'd like the meeting not to be forced, after all if she's still alive, Yasaka will have a lot to talk to her about. The Keno. I hope he is, and that they can fix things. They say. Yes, me too. At that point Issei would fall asleep, Akeno would smile upon seeing this, as time passed she would wake up. However, he realized that his head was in Akeno's lap. Akeno. You woke up a sleeper. They say. Yes, it seems that there is no one on the beach. The Keno. That's right. The Keno slid her lips towards Issei's, she would give him a long and viscous kiss with tongue, they were alone on the beach, and despite being in the open air that did not matter to them, then they took off their clothes and began to consummate an act of love. With Rias. She was with the other girls leaving the spa, she had a refreshing day. Isaka. I feel like I was born again. Rias. Me too. Zenovia. My muscles certainly feel renewed. Ravel. Too bad Akeno missed it. Zenovia. She went to the beach with Issei, they must be having fun. Isaka. In more than one way I would say. Rias. What do you mean? Isaka. Look out the window. At that everyone would look, Yusaka smiled, while the others were with their mouths open at what Issei and Akeno were doing. Isaka. Good thing we're the only ones currently seeing this. Zenovia. That he hasn't even done it to me outdoors. Ravel. 
How indecent. There he is. W.W. What the hell are you doing? One day later. Everyone was in a restaurant, the port city events had ended, and it was time for them to decide their next destination. There he is. Which part of Hoenn should we go to now? The Keno. In the event section it doesn't say anything interesting. Ravel. It must be an event venue. There he is. Of course not Ravel, just a place where we can try something new. Ravel. So how about exploring ruins? There he is. Exploration of ruins. Ravel. They say they found new ruins in Hoenn, and I want to participate in the treasure hunt. They say. Where did you see that, Ravel? Ravel. Internet. They say. Yusaka, does she already know how to use the internet? Yusaka. Learn quickly. Zenovia. I thought we had found all the ruins in our time. They say. No, even today ruins are still being found, some ruins have mechanisms that hide them, others are camouflaged by nature, and others are buried, throughout history I could see how they continue to discover more ruins. Zenovia. And there really are treasures, the last ruin I went to. Issei takes Zenovia's hand from her to reassure her. Issei. I know some have ancient objects or artifacts of historical value, others have murals that tell stories. There he is. Apparently the ruins only provide historical value. Issei. You can still make money with those things, although there are few in which apart from the historical value, treasures have also been found, such as gold and jewels. Isaka. The truth is that it is never certain what you will find in a ruin, plus no matter what ruin it is, they are always full of traps, that is for sure. There he is. It's risky, but I'm sure it will be fine for us, and exploration is fun. Issei. I do not object. Isaka. Me neither. Zenovia. I think it's an opportunity to get over the past, I'm not opposed to it either. Akeno. It could be interesting. Ravel. Then it's decided. There he is. That's right Ravel, let's explore the ruins. Everyone prepared to leave quietly, the location of the place was in the mountains, far from any city, when they arrived they could see a lot of people. Ravel. It seems that many came to the place. They say. Ruins are attractive to anyone, after all you can find various types of treasures. There he is. I suppose that a mural that tells a story can be torn off the wall and sold to a museum for a modest price. They say. Exactly. The Keno. But there is something I don't understand, in these times the ruins must be invaluable treasures for those who discovered them, because giving their location. They say. Certainly when peace between humans and Pokemon was achieved, there was no longer a need to share the ruins, many who found ruins did not say anything because of the value it could provide, the problem was that they forgot that the ruins were full of traps, so they died in the process, then a new discoverer arrived believing to be the first. He died again and when someone finally succeeded, he saw all the corpses of the previous explorers. Ravel. So they made it a rule to report their appearance. They say. No, the decision to report was still yours, the reason they reported the appearance of ruins is to use people as cannon fodder. Zenovia. What? Ravel. That's unheard of. They say. The discoverers do not have the right over them, anyone can enter and take a treasure, but of course the thing is if you survive, they let the others go ahead and clear the land, if you survived, in the best case the thing is like this, well take part of the treasure and leave. There he is. And in the worst case. They say. They kill the weakened survivors and keep everything for themselves. The Keno. The current government is not doing anything about it. They say. They do or should I say that it seems to be so, they send their men they say it is for security, but they are also interested in the treasures and information of the ruins, if they die then they can't do much either. Ravel. Why? They say. A ruin is a closed circuit, and some the cameras don't work, so it's useless to record a video, in others they work, but you have to get out of them alive to show the video, it's also easy to get rid of a body, fake a death, in short, what happens inside a ruin is uncertain, the only source of information, reliable or not, are the people who got out of it alive. Zenovia. And all these people are aware of this fact. They say. Yes, after all the ruins attract everyone, the poor, the middle class, the rich, the famous etc. Zenovia. Is it really worth it to throw your life down the drain? They say. Look at that side. Zenovia. Hey. They say. There are the poor people, their eyes show a difficult life full of deprivation, who has never been poor, will never be able to truly understand what it feels like, and the difficulty that their future will entail, for them this is a miracle, it is the opportunity to change their whole life. Zenovia. They could lose their lives, people only have one life. They say. There is the dilemma, do you prefer to live in difficulty with your family until the last day of your life, or bet your life and get your family out of poverty, not everyone is born with intelligence gifts, some know perfectly well their limitations, so they only have to bet everything. Zenovia. That's it. They say. 
On the other hand we have the rich and famous, they were born with a golden spoon, the only thing that differentiates some rich people from others is that some are humble and good people, and others are unfortunate. There is. I guess those who come to this place are the second ones. They say. The first ones too, although they are more fond of exploring ruins, as for the unfortunate ones, they have more money than they can spend in their life, but they want more, the famous ones too, they are already known throughout the world, but they always want to be number one. There is. From your point of view, how do you see the situation? They say. Be prepared to be attacked from behind, from my point of view anyone can be an assassin here, if you have the right price. Gravel. Understood. At that point, a person in a butler-like outfit approached the entrance to the ruin with a microphone. Immediately his voice was heard throughout the place. Gabriel. Good morning everyone, I am Gabriel Agreste, the butler of Master Derek D'Angelo, discoverer of this ruin, first of all thank you for your visit and your help, I wish you the best of luck in the ruin. They say. Like I supposed. There is. We are cannon fodder. They say. That's right, but I feel like there's something more to this, be careful, things may not be as simple as they seem to be. The say's gaze was fixed on that butler, in that he did not realize that a mysterious woman had been watching him for a while. Chapter 31. Distrust. The atmosphere, instead of becoming calm, was very tense. Gabriel's words had made everyone serious. Gabriel. I know that everyone wants to enter the ruin right now, but I think it would be better if you rested until night, and we will also provide information about the ruin. The murmurs of the people were heard and everyone agreed. They say. This is bad. There is. Hey what do you mean? They say. Providing information about the ruin can only mean that they have previously explored the ruin. Gravel. And that is not good. They say. No because that means the exploration stopped earlier. Isaka. I see. Zenovia. What's happening, I don't understand. Isaka. Explorations in the ruins continue without stopping, the explorers only stop when someone dies. They say. Exactly, normally they resume exploration after reporting the accident, but the fact that they will not resume exploration and notify the others can only mean one thing. Isaka. They encountered something they couldn't get through. They say. Correct. There is then they will really throw us out like cannon fodder. They say. As I said, they will make the most of this, regardless of the others. Isaka. I can be sure that there must be people from the government among us. They say. Yes apparently this ruin brought a lot of people. At night. Everyone was in front of the ruin, waiting for the information. Gabriel. As I promised, I bring you information. At that point several armed men approached with maps in their hands. They say. This is getting worse. There is. What what do they do now? They say. If the information is a map of the current ruin, then they will surely sell them. Zenovia. And that's bad. They say. Of course, many people here like I said can't afford it, it will give you a tremendous advantage in the ruin, but it will also make you a target for many within it. There is. Is a piece of paper really worth that much? They say. The map of a ruin can be very helpful to you, the fact that they take it out and show it, surely is so that everyone can memorize the faces of the buyers. Isaka. From the beginning they have tried to plant the seed of discord. They say. Of course, it is in the interest of these people that the people who reach the end are not many, the more distrust the better for them. Isaka. That way they prevent all the people here from turning against them, redirecting their greed against themselves. Zenovia. What an evil plan. There is. What do we do, do we buy the map or not? They say. Naturally we will buy it, and it will also be good to have a preview of the beginnings of the ruin, so we can organize ourselves better. After saying that Issei would go to buy the map, others apart from him went to buy it, many gazes could be felt on the people who bought the maps. Upon Issei's return, the girl saw that they were being watched by most. Zenovia. This doesn't look good. Issei. Don't worry, no one is stupid enough to attack in public, for now let's look at the map. Then, upon seeing the map, they noticed three peculiarities. First, the ruin inside was like a labyrinth, there were several paths, unfortunately on the map you couldn't see where the paths led. The second peculiarity was that there were rooms on the map marked as valuables, which struck him as odd, since valuables are usually the first thing taken from ruins. The third and final peculiarity is that there were rooms marked with question marks. They say. This is another strategy of theirs. There is. What do you mean? They say. We are encouraged to ask about these peculiarities, to draw even more attention to us. There is. I suppose that the buyers of the map are not going to refrain from asking. They say. Yes there's no point in doing nothing. As it was said it happened, it did not take long for someone who bought the map to ask about these three peculiarities. Frank. Excuse me, I would like to ask about three strange things I saw on the map, first the map shows several paths, but why does it not show the end of any of them? Gabriel. 
Oh, right, I should explain it, through investigations, we managed to find out that the ruin may be much larger than we thought, and that possibly each path leads to a different room, meaning that it is possible that there are many important things in this ruin, and the reason why no path leads to the end is simple, because the explorers died before reaching the end. After his words the whole atmosphere became very tense. Bravel. So if several roads lead to a different place, it means that we will have to separate. Rias. There really is a need, I mean it's not like we're like them who are desperate to find what's inside. They say. No, it seems we will have to separate. The Keno. Why? They say. When fighting, if we are attacked and we are all together on a path, it will be difficult to move freely, even more so if that path is very narrow. In the worst case scenario when we all fight at the same time, our attacks could cause the roof of the ruin to fall on us and be buried alive. Rias. Then it seems that separating will be the best thing. Then the guy spoke again, Gabriel smiled as if he expected it. Frank. I would also like to know why there are rooms on the map marked as valuable. Is this a trap? Gabriel. Not at all, the rooms on that map contain valuables, however, we were unable to take those valuables. Frank. What was the reason? Gabriel. The ruins sometimes have challenges or puzzles, if you can't solve them you can't take the valuables, so you are free to try to solve them, those who have the map will find it easier and faster to get to those rooms. At that the pressure increased, Issei realized that, Gabriel had returned to the map bearers, target number one. Bravel. By the way, you can't just take the valuable object by force. Issei. I don't recommend it, in many cases there are traps prepared to avoid that, and the valuable object can break. Bravel. Then, no matter what, we'll have to play along in that room. Then everyone turned to look at the man, because he was going to ask one last question, regarding the last peculiarity. Frank, because there are rooms marked with question marks. Gabriel. Those rooms contain treasures, however we don't know what kind, since you would first have to go through the danger hidden in them, the rooms are hermetically sealed, nothing enters or leaves once whatever is inside starts. Frank. How can you be sure there is treasure and it's not a death trap? Gabriel. Simple, one of our men managed to clear a room, of course his state was almost dead, but fortunately we saved him so he could give us this information, when he completed the room there was a lot of treasures. Frank. And what was the hidden danger that he went through? Gabriel. That's not important, we sent several of our men and in the end in each room, each one died in a different way, almost like the hidden danger is different for everyone. At that moment a girl walked towards the ruin, she was part of the people who bought the map. At that he turned around and stared at Issei, although only the girls noticed this, the others did not. Gabriel, do you want something miss? Lavinia. My name is Lavinia Renai. Gabriel. Very well, Miss Lavinia, do you want something? Lavinia. Move aside, I'm going in. Gabriel. A lady walking alone is. Lavinia. Let go. Gabriel. What? Lavinia. I have a fiancé, he'll be coming later, so please get out of my presence. Lavinia entered, ignoring Gabriel's words, this irritated him, but he continued talking. Gabriel. You can now enter the ruin if you want, the environment is very well lit inside. After his words many people heard, others stayed at the door. Rias. What are the others waiting for? They say. What do you think? Surely the first ones who entered were after the girl with the map. Those who stayed must be waiting for everything inside to calm down or for the remaining people who have the map. Ravel. By the way, that girl looked at you, Issei. Issei. If he did, he noticed. Rias. Is it someone from the past? All the girls looked at him with red eyes. Issei. For my fortune and current well-being, I can tell you that I do not know her, my Pokemon are witnesses. Rikwaza. True. Ravel. Then why am I staring at you? Say, I do an apostrophe T no, in fact I felt something strange when I saw her, how to say it it was like seeing a relative of her. Bravel. A relative you don't have a sister, right? Say, No, my only brother is Bali. I will have a sister the day she gets married or engaged. Rias. Well, you haven't heard from him for a long time. Say, I only know one thing about that girl, her aura is not normal, be careful. Bravel. Agreed. Say. Well first of all I'll buy maps for everyone, we'll form pairs of two, Rias you'll go with Akeno, Ravel will go with Yusaka, and I'll go with Zenovia, understood. Rias. Understood. Akeno. Okay. Ravel. Let's go. Yusaka. Let's have some fun. Zenovia. Go ahead. Following that Issei bought the remaining maps and gave them to the girls. He gained even more attention from everyone, but he just smiled, not caring about anything. Rias. Well, we'll get ahead, good luck. The Keno. See you at the end of the road. The Keno and Rias entered, Issei noticed how some people followed them. Zenovia. Will they be okay? Issei. 
I'm afraid those poor people are going to die. Zenobia. Well, that's a shame. I say. But you know the saying, pretty girl who kills thief and murderer has an eternity in paradise. Zenobia. Does that saying exist? I say. I didn't make that up, but it sounds good. Zenobia. Okay, let's go. I say. You're ready. Zenobia. Yes. Zenobia took Issei by the hand, both of them walked forward and entered the ruin. For Zenobia this was an important point, after all, it had been a long time since she entered a ruin. Unfortunately, the last time was when Irina died. Isaka and Ravel saw them enter, followed by other people, in the end they were the last to enter, along with a small group of people. Ravel. Millimeters. Isaka. What's up Ravel, I notice you're pensive. Ravel. I'm still thinking about that girl. Isaka. Issei said he had no relationship with her. Ravel. But I don't think it was normal for her to stare at him. Isaka. Maybe it's all due to a mistake, besides I heard that girl say that she had a fiancé. Ravel. Maybe I worry too much, come on. Isaka. Then get ready. The two of them would enter, followed by the last people left. Gabriel, seeing this, left. No one could imagine how this would end. Ravel. I don't want to worry Asaka, but I still feel easy, I could notice a Keno too, when she saw that girl, I know something is wrong. Elsewhere. There were corpses on the ceiling, on the walls and on the floor, all of these were very well armed men. And all of these were frozen, except for one. Soldier. I'm sorry, I'm just following orders, please don't kill me. Lavinia. It's very funny, you're ready to kill, but not to die. Soldier. Wait, I can tell you everything if you promise to let me go. Lavinia. I know who's behind it all, you think I'm an idiot, your fate was sealed when you attacked me. Soldier. Wait. Lavinia. Now what? Soldier. If you kill me, you will not get out of this ruin alive. Lavinia. Smiles fool, when my fiancé arrives, no evil person will be able to get out alive inside or out of this ruin. Soldier. Please no. His body was frozen upon contact, killing him instantly. Articuno. I expected nothing less from my trainer. Lavinia. Let's move on, something tells me that this ruin hides important things. Articuno. By the way, that is a boy, I remember him. Lavinia. I wanted to see how strong my fiancé's brother was. Articuno. And what did you think? Lavinia. Vali is right, he is a monster equal to or greater than him. Chapter 32. Exploration. In the ruins, Issei and Zenovia were quietly exploring, in front of them were people ready to attack them. Brandon. These are the guys who bought a lot of maps, how curious, right? Axel. That's right, we are very lucky. Siri. Hand over your maps and we'll let you go alive. Issei. Get out of my sight and I will leave you alive. Zenovia. I say the same thing. Axel. Arrogant. Immediately they were about to transform, but immediately in a second, the three of them were pierced by drops of water on their legs. Siri Brandon Axel. Aya. Zenovia. First of all I am merciful, I pierced their legs, but I was able to pierce their heads. Axel. How what did he attack us with? Zenovia. With water. Brandon. How the hell does water do that to you? I say. It all depends on the speed at which an object or thing moves, do you think that if a grain of sand moved at the speed of light, it would not be able to pierce your head, well you are wrong, it could do that, and more, a drop of water at the right speed, can even cut a metal beam. Axel. You guys are monsters. I say. No, we are humans with very monstrous powers. Siri. Please don't kill us. Brandon. We won't do it again. I say. I'll do it on one condition, you must answer a question, accept. Axel. Of course, we will tell you whatever you want. I say. Have they killed innocent people before? Siri. What? Brandon. Well. Axel. No, we haven't. I say. Zenovia, take care of it. Zenovia. Sure. At that moment, Zenovia would decapitate them in a second, their heads falling to the ground. They say. If you hadn't lied maybe your ending would be different, but you chose to lie. Zenovia. They had experience killing, that could be noticed, and from their attitude they didn't care if they were guilty or innocent. They say. I guess it's true what they say, when no one is watching people show their true colors. Zenovia. Do you think the girls have already met people like that? They say. In fact, they must already be killing. With Rias and Akeno. There were corpses, some turned to stone, others burned by electric shocks. It. They're monsters, they're bucking monsters. The Keno. They came for us too thinking we're weak. Rias. This shows that you should not trust appearances. The Keno. Are we done with this? Rias. Don't leave him, he was the only one who was doubting, he had surely never killed anyone. It. Shivering. The Keno. 
if you value your life, come back. Believe me, this is not a place for the weak. The Keno and Riaz would continue on their way, leaving the subject alone. But Yusaka and Ravel. Screams were heard all over the place, from the silhouette of Yusaka and Ravel, you could see how they were fighting. Yusaka was slicing her enemies into pieces, while Ravel was burning them, only ashes remained. Yusaka. It seems like this was the last one. Ravel. Issei was right, this place is a killing zone. Yusaka. Human greed can bring out the worst in us. Ravel. Have you ever coveted something? Yusaka. What do you think? Ravel. And you got it. Yusaka. Just look at my current situation. Ravel. Sighs looking at it from that perspective what you coveted was not impossible. Isaka. Maybe, but I knew when to stop, the point of greed is that there are people who don't know how to stop. Ravel. That's true. Isaka. Let's move on, according to the map one of the rooms with a question mark is ahead. Ravel. With our level, do you think this ruin will present any problems? Isaka. If I'm honest, even if you have a high level Pokemon, you can't be too confident. The real problem with the ruins is their traps. You might think that their traps aren't difficult, but it all depends. Ravel. What do you mean by that? Isaka. Some ruins have traps that can be very problematic, I suppose if we encounter one I will tell you. Ravel. Agreed. But Issei and Zenobia. They advanced along the path, apparently there were no more attacks on them. Issei. Wait, stop. Zenobia. Hey. Zenobia quickly stopped walking at Issei's sudden action. Issei. Whatever happens, don't move. Zenobia. D OK. She was nervous, for her part of her essay slowly pushed her back, then grabbed a stone and threw it forward, then a circle appeared, the stone disappearing. Essay. That was close. Zenobia. What the hell was that? Essay. A ruined trap, in this case it is a teleportation circle. Zenobia. What? Essay. They were discovered many years after you died, it transports you to another place far from the ruin. Zenobia. Where to? Essay. That's the problem, it could be anywhere in the world, you could end up in a cave, in the middle of the sea, in a volcano you never know where you're going to end up, but if one thing it is certain, it's that these people never send you to a safe place. Zenobia. I wonder how they created traps like these. Issei. We both know that before the fusion between worlds, there were humans in the world of Pokemon, but they died, it is normal to think that they created these ruins, but as for traps of this style, they were definitely created by a Pokemon dot. Zenobia. Do you think someone with a contract did it? They say. That's right, but it must have been a Pokemon with the ability to intervene or control space. Zenobia. Can you think of a Pokemon like that? They say. Well actually there is a Pokemon that controls time and another that controls space. Zenobia. This must have been his doing, do you think the Pokemon that did this is here? They say. No, he is not from this region. Anyway let's move forward more carefully, we don't want to be sent to the other side of the world. Zenobia. If you fell into a trap like that, do you think it would take you long to get back? They say. Well, it all depends on where he leaves me. If I couldn't return, it means that the place he sent me to is a place with a very complicated situation, something like a kind of prison. Zenobia. Is that possible? They say. I once fell into one of those traps, it sent me to an underground tunnel, if I used force to get out it would cause a collapse in the tunnel, and I didn't know if there were innocent people or not, so to avoid that happening I walked through the tunnels until I found the exit, it took a long time. Zenobia. What if there were people in the tunnel? They say. Yes, it was a mining tunnel, thank goodness I did not consider the option of force, that is why I say if you are caught in a teleportation circle, you cannot act rashly in the place it sends you without knowing your surroundings first. Dot. Zenobia. I understand, what happens if I don't find the exit? They say. Don't worry about it, just maintain your transformation with Kyager, and I will find you by detecting your energy, also vice versa in case I fall. Zenobia. I hope the girls don't fall into this kind of trap. They say. Don't worry, the legendary Pokemon are sensitive, they will surely be alerted in advance. That that Issei looks at the map, he notices that they reach the point where nothing else is shown on the map. They say. This is where the map ends. Zenobia. Well, we chose a straight path, it was no wonder, we will surely be the first to reach the end. They say. Then let's see what will be in the end. But that they put away the map and continued walking. With Ravel and Yusaka. Shock. Low. Shock. Huge stone statues were attacking Yusaka and Ravel, but the battle did not last long, the statues were soon destroyed. Yusaka. What do you think? Ravel. Certainly a normal person would die, those statues are very strong, I'm not surprised that the rooms that appear with a question mark on the map, have claimed lives. Isaka. It is certainly like that guy said, the room is sealed tight. 
Bravel. The room opened again because we completed the challenge, but where is the treasure? Shaking. The Sokka. Hey. Bravel. The floor is shaking. It was then that a mural emerged from the ground at high speed, Yasaka and Ravel admired how big the mural was. Isaka. It seems that thing is the treasure. Ravel. Issei said that the ruins could contain objects of historical value, I guess this is one of them. Isaka. I don't think we can take this now. Ravel. I'm afraid so size dot dot so much for nothing. Isaka. Don't be discouraged, there are surely more treasures ahead. Ravel. Yes, it's true. Isaka. Then let's continue. Ravel. Wait, before we continue we could see what the mural says, if it came out of the ruin, then it means that it has to do with it. Isaka. Well more information wouldn't hurt. Ravel. True. Isaka. Let me see. Ravel. Can you read it? Isaka. Yes, I think I can translate it. Ravel. What does it say? Isaka. Say. Lately I'm worried about the world, it moves fast and forgets the past, that's why I created this place, a place to remember the past. I hope the world never forgets the legendary giants, although they are also known as the legendary titans. But before saying who they are, I would like to start by saying that thanks to them humanity can move forward. They have helped us a lot, but seeing that no one does anything for them, I propose creating this place for them, a way to thank them. Ravel. This person doesn't seem to be from this world. Isaka. No, as Issei said, before our worlds were one, there were humans in the world of Pokemon, but they became extinct due to their mistakes. Ravel. Say something else. Isaka. I'm not afraid it won't cut here. At that point Isaka touched the mural with her finger, and more murals came out of the ground. Shaking. Ravel. Wow. Isaka. It seems that I just had to touch it for more to appear. Ravel. Be careful, don't touch the others, you can trigger a trap. Isaka. Don't worry, I'll read it from now on. Everything is bad very bad, I fear that soon there will be a fight against the beings who helped us. Ravel. Hey. Isaka. This is really unusual. Ravel. A fight with those who help them, but because. Isaka I will continue reading. The legends of the legendary giant spread across many regions of the Pokemon world. It is said that the first giant to exist was Rigagigas, and that he created the other giants from different materials in his image and likeness of him. They use clay, rocks and boulders to create Rigirock, with sediments from different geological strata. It used magma from the Earth's mantle to form the hard metal body of Registeel, which rose to the surface approximately 10,000 years ago. They used a special ice that cannot be melted to create Regis during some glaciation in the Ice Age. They use pure electrical energy to create Regileki, with a body that could be considered an electrogenic organ. They used crystallized dragon energy to create Regidrago, although he was only able to complete his head. It is said that after creating the giants, Rigagigas tied the continents together with ropes and pulled them into their current position, shaping the regions as they are known today. The legendary giants would have lived with people, helping them with their power throughout the history of humanity. It is even said that when a volcano erupted in the Sinnoh region, Rigagigas appeared with Rigirok, Registeel and Regis, to stop the eruption and save everyone from destruction. Ravel. These Pokémon don't sound like they're evil. Isaka. So what led the humanity of the Pokémon world to have a fight with them? Ravel. Yusaka keep reading, I have a bad feeling, as if something very bad is about to happen. Isaka. Okay. If anyone is reading this, they must be wondering. Why? Why fight with those who helped humanity? The answer may not be to your liking, but if you still want to know I'll tell you. I'll tell you how we stabbed the gentle giants in the back. For these sins will remain here, engraved in stone for all eternity. Chapter 33. Truth of the Past. Isaka and Ravel were looking at the murals, then they stopped for a second because armed men entered the room. Soldier. Stop right there. Ravel. These guys are the ones who made the maps. Isaka. Of course, this was planned, the others would spend their lives completing the rooms and advancing on the paths, so that in the end everything they find would be snatched away. Ravel. Issei was right, in the ruins anything goes. Isaka. I assume they're going to kill us. Soldier. Smart girl, that's right, we were ordered to leave no survivors, in addition to securing and snatching all the treasures that people like you get. Isaka. I guess one squad went each way. Soldier. You don't need to know that. Isaka. It doesn't matter if you don't want to say it, it's obvious that you do. Ravel. Your orders come from that guy Gabriel. Isaka. It is useless to deny that because who else but him. Soldier. Butler Gabriel is Master Derek D'Angelo's right-hand man, although the plan was drawn up by Gabriel, the assassination order was given by Master Derek, so we have orders to follow, no hard feelings. Isaka. 
Okay, no hard feelings, Ravel, are you acting or me? Ravel. Leave it to me. Bisaka. Understood. Soldier. Well, it's normal to resist, but it's useless. You're all going to. But at that moment all the soldiers except the one who spoke were instantly burned. Walters. Many people boast about their Ravel quantity, I hope you are never like them, you must learn that quality is always above quantity. Ravel. I totally understand that. Soldier. B but W what was. The soldier was speechless, all his companions were killed instantly. Ravel. From now on you will answer everything we ask you if you don't want to die, do you understand or not? Soldier. Anya. The soldier had no choice but to accept, he knew that he was going to die if he didn't speak. Isaka. First question how many units did they send? Soldier. About 30, each unit went on a path. Isaka. They are not worried that the government suspects them. Soldier. We have orders to lie about their deaths and leave false evidence to avoid raising suspicions. Isaka. What are they looking for here? Soldier. Master Derek D'Angelo is currently in a succession battle with his brothers over his family's inheritance. Bravel. What does this ruin have to do with your family's inheritance? Soldier. In his family, everyone proves to be worthy, the one who brings the most benefits to the family will be the successor of the head of the family, the ruin was a gold mine for him, but also a risky bet, that is why he brought his most faithful men and left everything in charge of his butler Gabriel, that way if something bad happens he does not assume all the blame. Bravel. That guy Gabriel agrees to be a scapegoat. Soldier. He knows that if he fails, they won't kill him, after all, he's more useful to the master alive, and his loyalty to Derek is blind. Bravel. What do we do Yusaka? Isaka. We will think about that when we meet with the others. Bravel. Okay, so what do we do with this guy? Isaka. Naturally the logical thing in these cases. Bravel. And that's it. Isaka. If you are willing to kill, you must also be willing to die. Soldier. Please wait, I'm here. Cut. Then a single movement Yusaka would cut off his head. Bravel. There will be trouble when we leave. Isaka. We'll think about what to do, for now let's worry about finishing exploring this ruin. Bravel. Yes, we were interrupted when you were reading the mural. Isaka. Okay, I'll continue. Isaka would approach the murals to continue reading. Bravel. Ready. Isaka. Yes, I found it where I left it. I have often wondered if I could have really done anything to prevent all this fighting from taking place. But there is no point in thinking about the past, you can't go back. You see, the legendary giants had helped us a lot, but as time passed, the admiration that people felt for them was soon transformed into fear. Despite all the help the legendary giants had given to humanity, people began to fear their power. For example, people began using the insulating component of Rigileki to keep their power at bay, and feared that if Regidrago became complete, it would bring destruction. This triggered a fight on the part of us humans, I was totally against it, after everything they had done for us, it seemed very unfair to pay them like that. But I couldn't stop their plan, with or without my help they would finish them off, but the power of the giants was too strong for us to win. I was still in a neutral position, I didn't know what to do, or which side to take. The wrath of the giants was unleashed, they would kill everyone, I could not stay watching this massacre any longer. I didn't want to kill the giants, but I didn't want them to kill the humans either. So I found a way, with this I would satisfy the humans and save the giants, even if with this method I would earn their hatred. Ravel. This doesn't look good. Isaka, I agree, I'm starting to get a bad feeling. Ravel. Molters those giants, do you know something? Molters. Of course, there is no way that any legendary or higher Pokemon did not know about them, they existed, but they became a myth even for us, since no one ever saw them again. Isaka. That doesn't sound good. Molters. That's right I'm afraid we've gotten ourselves into something big. Isaka. I will continue reading. I discovered a ritual, using the energy of nature that the Pokemon exudes, I will be able to seal them forever. In this way I will end this fight, but the hatred of the giants is assured for me. Either way I will pay a price after doing the ritual. That's how the day came, I prepared the ritual, led them into a disappointment and began the sealing. They resisted until the end, but I managed to seal them, although the seal was not firm it would serve to hold them until I could make a firmer one. People asked me what was going to happen now, I told them that they had to be divided. Together the six of them were unstoppable, but if we divided them, their power would not only decrease, but they would have the opportunity to reseal them more easily, and their power when released would not be as strong, they would have to wait a while to recover. Therefore, the giants were sent to the depths of caves and temples, which are now ruins, there to complete the sealing. Bravel. Wait, caves and temples that are now ruins. Isaka. It can't be. 
The giants were separated and sealed in different regions, Hon, Sino, Anova and Galar. But I was cautious, I made it so that Rigagigas would only wake up when the other giants gathered. That way I avoid the biggest risk, currently Regidrago and Regileki are in Galar, sealed in a place where no one can access. Rigagigas is in Sino, hidden deep in the earth where no one can find it. Rigirak and Registeel, I placed them in Unova in a temple where anyone who dares to enter dies instantly, due to its impossible living conditions. Finally I left Regis and Hoenn, right in this ruin where I'm making the murals. Ravel. That. Bisaka. That means there's a legendary Pokemon here. So if you're reading this, get out of here, this place is not safe, with the help of someone in their Pokemon, create teleportation circles, these send you to dangerous places, where death is assured, most of these connect with areas or temples of legendary Pokemon. Ravel. Hey. Bisaka. This is bad, every time I read it and think it can't get any worse, it gets worse. Ravel. There is still one last mural. Bisaka. Let's see what he says. I noticed something, the Regis seal is imperfect, I'm afraid it will be released soon. Unfortunately I can't seal it, I mentioned before that I was going to pay a price for doing this. And I am paying for it, as a consequence of having made the seals, my body will be lost in the dimensional walls for all eternity. This is my punishment, however I have to make some preparations. Although Regis is not as much of a threat as before when he is alone, he is still powerful, and now has an incredible hatred towards humans. I'm afraid it will be very aggressive and will kill any human it sees, it could even kill Pokemon if provoked. I have analyzed possible patterns of behavior, or how I might act after leaving the seal. First of all, he will surely try to look for his companions, unfortunately he will not be able to find them. I fear that this will lead him to take valuable items from other Pokemon to look for a way to find his companions, and these objects must not be simple, they could cause conflicts between legendary Pokemon. I'm sure he'll use this ruin as a base, no matter how far he goes he'll come back here, because this is his home. I can't stop what he does outside, I don't have time, but I can stop him when someone comes in. You see I made a modification, and when someone reaches the end of the ruin, where he is. The countdown will automatically start and this ruin will collapse, but there are traps, I can no longer deactivate them, so I will need it to be attractive, that is why I will put things that awaken human greed, treasures and jewels. I leave this message, because I think I can at least save a few. I don't expect forgiveness, I do what is necessary to keep the peace. Although sometimes doing what is necessary requires sacrifices, but I hope you understand, all life may be sacred. But they cannot compare the life of a few with the life of many. After finishing reading, Yusaka and Ravel would be shocked. Ravel. Wait for it. Yusaka. This is bad, very bad. Ravel. If anyone reaches the end of this ruin, everything will collapse. Walters. You must find the others quickly and tell them what will happen if they reach the end of the ruin. Yusaka and Ravel ran out quickly. Ravel. Could we survive a collapse? Walters? It depends on the depth we are at, there is nothing here that allows us to know that, but I assure you that those who have the least chance of surviving are you, Akeno and Yusaka. Ravel? That's not very comforting. Walters? I'm one of the legendary birds, not a Ravel mole, you better stop his say. Yusaka? We have to be careful as we move forward, traps can backfire, especially teleportation traps. Ravel? Do you think you can find the others? Yusaka? I feel everyone's energy, fortunately none of them seem close to reaching the end. Ravel. That's great, it will give us time to let them know. Isaka. I can also feel that there are a lot of people still in ruins. Ravel. That means. Isaka. Yes possibly many people will not be saved if they reach the end. Ravel. We can surely prevent it. At that moment a tremor began to be felt, Ravel and Yusaka were shocked. Ravel. This can't be. Isaka. It's impossible who reached the end. Deep in the ruin, in front of Regis, was a woman known. Lavinia. Prepare to be caught. Regis. Regis. In other places the tremor was felt, this gave everyone a bad feeling, for their part Yusaka and Ravel continued running, dodging traps without stopping. Ravel. That damn woman on the mural really set a lot of traps. Yusaka. Well it was a place that had to be protected, it was not for less. Ravel. I understand well that she did it for the protection of humanity, but we are not that humanity. Yusaka. Ravel, I don't think it's right to blame a human from the Pokemon world of that time. She didn't know that the humans of that world would be killed in the future by a virus. Ravel. Still I don't like dealing with the consequences of another. Isaka. Yes. Ravel. But I have to say that she was in a difficult position, I do an apostrophe t know what I would have done in her situation. Isaka. I agree. Ravel. By the way, it said your name on the mural. Isaka. Yes, her name was Roswis. 
Chapter 34. A Forgotten Tale. A long time ago. The cherry trees scattered their leaves all over the school, the students were preparing for another school year. Have you heard of her? They say she comes from a prestigious family. Really? Then I will befriend her. Don't even try it. Her family has standards. Lavinia. Sighs I guess this school is the same. I was always the best since I was born, beauty, fame, talent and money, I had it all. Since I was little I knew what my place was, also what I had to do, a picture is worth a thousand words. That's why I had to be perfect, be more perfect than anyone else. Excellent grades, mastery in various fields, participation in school clubs and victories in school competitions. I earned the nickname The Invincible Lady. She was great in the archery competition. She's beautiful. Yes, it's true. Hey, do you think she has a boyfriend? I'll ask her out of it. Don't even try, the invincible lady has another nickname, the woman with a cold heart. Oh really? Yes, they say she has rejected many. Apparently she is not interested in romance. Lavinia. Another day. Yes, every day I check my mailbox and find love letters, in the end I throw them away. Then some days I heard confessions from boys, but I rejected them. I do an apostrophe t belittle her feelings about her, I just see love as something ridiculous and unnecessary, if I focus on maintaining a perfect and impeccable image I will be able to go further in life. Love only serves to stray from the path and fall into perdition. Yes, I must remain perfect, I have an image to maintain. Shock. Low. Lavinia. Hey what's that sound? Shock. Shock. Zenovia. You have improved your swordsmanship skills arena. Arena. You too, although your style doesn't suit that of a light sword. Zenovia. I know, but fencing classes at school are limited to this type of swords. Arena. Oh look, someone arrived. Zenovia. Hey you're Lavinia, hello. Lavinia. Hello, sorry for the interruption, I heard a sound and I looked over to see your fencing practice. Arena. You are interested in fencing. Lavinia. No, it's not my thing. Arena. It's a shame, our members don't want to fight with us because of our strength. Zenovia. You hit them really hard last time. Arena. Hey, you did it too. Zenovia. But I knocked them out with one blow, you were softer and made them suffer more pain. Arena. That's because you are a behemoth of brute force. Zenovia. Repeat that. Lavinia. Edo. Zenovia. Sorry. Arena and I forgot about the others when we started fighting. Lavinia. Don't worry, I understand. Zenovia. You look thoughtful, do you have any questions? Lavinia. Why do you try so hard? Zenovia. Hey. Lavinia. They must have some goal in mind, what do they want? Arena. Well, it's nothing big, we want a boy. Lavinia. To a boy. Zenovia. Yes, it is as Arena says. Lavinia. But a boy for each one or. Zenovia. It's just one boy. We both like one boy. Lavinia. What? Arena. Yes, we are in love with him. Lavinia. Wow. I have a lot to say, but instead I'll ask, what does that boy have to do with you practicing fencing? Arena. Ha, Zenovia and I, we have always loved practicing with the sword, ever since we can remember, every time we picked up the sword we felt free, it also sharpened our determination, and that is what we need. Lavinia. Do you need determination? Arena. This world is not simple, people judge each other, you see Lavinia, what we try to do is something that the world considers wrong, but it is our decision. Zenovia. We both like the same boy, but neither of us is willing to give him up, so we'll both love him. Arena. And we need that determination to be able to face the world, after all, one day that moment will come. Lavinia. Is that boy really worth it? Arena. Well, whether or not it's worth it is not something that others can determine, only you can. Zenovia. Exactly, for us he is worth it and we will give everything for him. Lavinia. Okay. That day I left after that talk, both girls were talented, but I felt it was a waste to do all that for a boy. There was no guarantee that he would meet his expectations of him, in the end he could not understand why they did it. Love was really worth so much, to go to such extremes. That question stayed in my head for a long time. The days passed and I was still perfect. Then one day they said they would publish the grades universally, that is, to see who was the best in the school. Look, she's the invincible lady. She's here to see her position. It's obvious that when it's published, she'll win. The invincible lady is the best. Look, the results have already been published. Let's see. That's right, they are right, there is no one in this school better than me. Lavinia. Hey. Lavinia Rena second place. Arena. I came in tenth place, not bad. Zenovia. I was ranked 200th, but I studied all night. Say, Calm down, I'll accompany you in your pain. I was ranked 199th. 
This can't be possible, I always come first, it's impossible, I come second. Who the hell came in first place? Bali Hyoto first place. Lavinia. Bali. Who is Bali? I say. As always you are the first Bali. Bali. The classes were easy. Zenovia. I really envy your wit, Bali, but I seem to barely get by. Bali. Don't worry Zenovia, things will get better, I think in the future. Lavinia. Who is that guy? That was the day when, for the first time, I became interested in knowing something about a boy. Obviously I had an image to maintain, so I looked for him when there were no people around. Lavinia. Hey, you stop right there. Bali. Are you talking to me? Lavinia. That's right. Bali. I have something for you. Lavinia. How did you come in first place? Bali. Well studying. Lavinia. Don't be a smart guy, to be in first place, someone would have to have a score of 10 in absolutely almost all subjects, that would be the only way to surpass me, it is something that even I have not achieved how did you achieve it? Bali. Well, studying like I told you. Lavinia. It's impossible. Bali. Just because you can't mean others can't do it. Lavinia. What are you saying? Bali. Okay, I'm leaving. Lavinia. Wait, listen to me. Bali. Sorry, I'm busy. Lavinia. You're going to ignore a beautiful girl talking. Bali. Yes. Lavinia. You're ha. I had never felt so insulted, there were men begging to talk to me, but he was different, maybe that's why I wanted to get closer to him. The next few days, try to talk to him when he is alone. Bali. You again, you know that bullying is bad, right? Lavinia. Who's stalking you? Bali. Size well what do you want? Lavinia. You know what I want. Bali. I just studied and answered correctly. Lavinia. I don't believe that. Bali. Well let's do something, tomorrow there will be an exam to evaluate the student's abilities again, come to my house to study with me, that way you will know that I do not cheat. Lavinia. I'm sorry, I have a reputation to maintain, I can't create rumors and let them see me with you. Bali. Don't worry, no one will be at my house today. Lavinia. Are you planning to take advantage of me? Bali. There's no way to please you, right? Lavinia. Okay, I'll go, but I'll bring something to defend myself, so don't try anything. Bali. Don't worry, I won't do it. That guy's indifferent face was annoying, but he was telling the truth, I went to his house and he didn't make a move, which for some reason made me angry. Finally the day of showing the results arrived, again that guy came in first place. Lavinia. Impossible. Bali. See, I told you so. Lavinia. This doesn't make sense. Bali. Well, I'll go get something to eat. I say. Bali you come to the cafeteria. Bali. I'm coming. After that I continued seeing him to talk to him, of course always in a place where no one could see us. Bali. You know we could meet in public sometime. Lavinia. I should never take care of my reputation. Bali. Whatever you say. Lavinia. Also. Bali. Yes. Lavinia. My family is very strict, I must avoid rumors from spreading, they can reach them. Bali. It's not much of an exaggeration to say that school rumors reach your family's ears. Lavinia. That's because you don't know them, they are very annoying. Bali. If you say it, it must be true. Lavinia. Don't you doubt me? Bali. No, I feel that if your family was less serious, you would act more freely. Lavinia. Well, I don't deny that there are things I want to do, but I can't do, like for example going to a fair, parachuting out of a plane, driving a motorcycle. Bali. And why don't we do that? Lavinia. Hey. Bali. Of course, the fair, skydiving and riding a motorcycle are out of my pocket. Lavinia. Impossible, my parents wouldn't let me go out. Bali. They don't have to know. Lavinia. You talk about lying to them, no, it's impossible, I could never do it. Bali. Come on, you only live once. Lavinia. D.O.K. Okay. Since that day I think everything changed for me, I had fun at a fair, these kinds of things are fun. I can't believe I've spent my life being so closed off, there are all kinds of exciting things in this world. And thanks to Vali I met them. Lavinia. Vali you want to parachute out of a plane. Vali. Hey. Are you kidding? Lavinia. No, buy a plane. Vali. Okay, Lavinia, I want you to think seriously about what is going to happen. Skydiving is risky. Lavinia. Like any sport, but that doesn't take away from the excitement. Vali. You're literally going to jump out of a plane several meters high, plummeting to the ground. Lavinia. I know, it doesn't sound great. Bali. Oh my god well I incited her to this point I guess I can't leave her alone in this damn guilt. Time went on, I vomited a lot when I touched the ground, I laughed a lot. Bali. I won't do it again. Lavinia. 
Haha, what are you saying? It was incredible. Bali. How will we get back home? Lavinia. On a motorcycle of course. Bali. Not there. Lavinia. Don't worry, I let you drive. Bali. I don't know how to drive a motorcycle. Lavinia. So I'm driving. Bali. No, I'll do it I'd be crazy if I let you drive. The days continued to pass, Bali and I became closer, then I realized that I had fallen in love with him. Bali. Sighs. Lavinia. Are you alone with me? Bali. My brother doesn't want to try hard. Lavinia. Well, there's no guarantee that your brother is as smart as you. Bali. You're right. Lavinia. You see it. Bali. He is smarter than me. Lavinia. What? Bali. I have always been told that I am a monster, I excel in written tests, physical tests, sports and championships, but my brother is a monster equal to or greater than me. Lavinia. You must be kidding. Bali. Look at this. Lavinia. A written test. Bali. It's my brother's. Lavinia. It's all in six. Bali. Correct. Lavinia. I don't understand. Bali. Normally a person's results vary, but my brother's don't. Lavinia. It's true, she literally has sixes in all subjects, it's impossible there are no changes even by a decimal. Bali. And the only way to get six in all subjects exactly. Lavinia. It's controlling your results. Bali. Now you understand right. Lavinia. I hope to meet him someday. Bali. It will please you. The days passed and with them, there was a change in our relationship, from friends to boyfriends, it was the happiest day of my life, unfortunately that happiness did not last long. Lavinia. What happened Bali, why did you call me urgently today? Bali. Lavinia, I think we should just be friends. Crack. That day I'm sure I heard the sound. The sound my heart made. When it broke. Lavinia. What? Bali. We live in two different worlds, we have to be realistic, our situation is impossible. Chapter 35. Broken Heart. View of Vali. Lately I was spending time with a girl, her name was Lavinia. Everyone at school knew her, well except my brother, honestly if he doesn't bother to try hard, he doesn't bother to pay attention. I've spent a lot of time with this girl, I feel like something has changed in me, if I can't deny it I love her. Lavinia. Hi Vali. Vali. What's wrong, why did you call me so early? Lavinia. Please be my boyfriend. Bali. What? Lavinia. I like you, please go out with me. Bali. Be but I. Lavinia. You didn't like it. Bali. And no I like you too. Lavinia. Hey. Bali. It's just that it's the first time that a girl has confessed her love for me. Lavinia. Impossible, you are athletic and very handsome. Bali. I have a peculiar way of being, I am very competitive, I drag my partner to win. Lavinia. Haha, <laughs> I know you well enough to accept that part of you. Bali. Then I am in your care. Lavinia. I love ya woo. -woo. Lavinia didn't miss the opportunity to pounce on me and kiss me. It was the first time I felt so nervous. The days passed and with them there was a change in our relationship from friends to boyfriends. Unfortunately this happiness could not last. I was contacted by Lavinia's father days before, his guards escorted me to the guard. Sir, I have brought you as you requested. Back off. Bali. May I ask who wanted to talk to me about? I heard you're dating my daughter. Bali. Lavinia and I have not made our relationship public, not even my brother knows like. I watch my daughter 24 hours a day, I have guards protecting her at all times. Bali. Then why why is he only now contacting me? He should be aware of everything Lavinia and I have done together, right? Of course, I've been aware of all his escapades, even skydiving, none of that matter to me, but why do you think that is so? Bali. What? I let her go out with you for a reason, tell me what you think it is. Bali. I wanted Lavinia to escape to the fair, to do dangerous things like skydiving and riding a motorcycle, but it's crazy, she told me that her family had an image to take care of, that it had to be perfect I don't understand. I guess it's not easy to guess. Bali. You know, Lavinia told me that for her family I always had to be perfect. But can you consider obedience perfection? Bali. Shock dot dot no. Obedience is not perfection. Are you? My daughter had everything, she was talented so her future was assured, she was perceptive, so she was not afraid of someone deceiving her, but above all she was too obedient, obedience often prevents us from thinking for ourselves, and that is worth more than all of the above. Bali. He wanted Lavinia to challenge his authority. Many may think that an obedient daughter is the best. But when I die, when your mother dies, where will that obedience go? I don't want a robot that can't think without its master, I want someone who can think freely, that's why I didn't do anything. 
I was actually looking for this from the beginning, but why do you think I sent her to a public school? Bali. Haha of course because it didn't occur to me, if Lavinia's family was rich, why didn't she send her to a better school? You understand now, right? Bali. Yes my actions benefited you so there was no need to get involved, but now it's different, right? And? My daughter has a great future, I will not allow that future to be interrupted by someone of your status. Bali. Don't use words to sugarcoat the matter if you have the balls, tell me things like they are to my face. Fine. I'll use the language appropriate to your kind. I don't want my daughter's boyfriend to be a poor bastard, from a poor bastard family, who has nothing to offer her. Like that or more clear. Bali. You have no right to. If you refuse, I can screw up your parents' job, I can stop your brother from going to college, I can make you not go to college. So think carefully about your words. Bali. Shakes hand dot dot you are. From the moment we are born our lives are determined by luck, that luck decides who has a golden or wooden spoon, unfortunately golden and wooden spoons do not mix. Bali. He thinks he has won. I have won, boy, I have money and therefore I have the power, what does your family have? Bali. He's a bastard. Be careful, this is a very delicate choice you have in your hands, and one wrong word could destroy your family. What do you decide, boy? Bali. I. B. I'm. Going to end my relationship with your daughter. Excellent decision, so you can see that I am not ungrateful, I will give you some money. Bali. Thank you sir. After that day I returned home, my brother was waiting for me. I say. You came back Bali. He. Something happened to you. Bali. I say. You think being poor degrades us. I say. What are you saying? You ate something wrong. Bali. Please answer. I say. Okay. I think the difference in social status is bullshit, just because someone has more money than me doesn't mean they're more than me, we're all human beings, we came to this world with nothing, and when we die we leave with nothing, just as we came, death is fair, it takes everyone equally, the good, the bad, the poor and the rich, we're all equal. Bali. So you think it's okay to make sacrifices for family? I say. Of course. Bali. Even at the cost of one's own happiness. I say. Happiness is not lost forever, if you lose something that makes you happy, you can get it back in the future when you have the means. Bali. Eyes widen. I say. It's all about starting over. Bali. Thanks bro. Thanks, really. I say. You're welcome. Bali. Do you want to burn money? I say. Isn't that illegal? Bali. Yes, but nobody has to know smiles. I say. Let's do it. Bali. Then let's go. I say. I don't know what you're going through brother, but I hope you understand that I will always support you. Since that day on I made a decision, one I hoped I wouldn't regret. Bali. Lavinia, I think we should just be friends. Lavinia. What? Bali. We live in two different worlds, we have to be realistic, our situation is impossible. Lavinia. Wait, what are you saying? Bali. We better not see each other for a while. Lavinia. Grabs him by the hand wait I did something wrong I did something you didn't like, I'll correct it. Bali. You didn't do anything, I just thought we weren't in a position to be a couple. Lavinia. But why? Bali. It's the best for us. Let's go. Lavinia. Wait a minute Bali. Bali. I'm sorry, but this is over. I'm leaving. Lavinia. Please. I saw her crying on the floor, but I couldn't turn back, her father has eyes everywhere. I have to make her believe that I'm done with her, I have to even lie to myself. Forgive me Lavinia, but I promise I will come back for you, I will do so when I am capable enough to face your father. Even if it takes years, I won't forget you. Until then I will swallow the pain. View of Lavinia. Lavinia. Because because just because what did I do wrong? I don't know how much I cried, I just know that after that Bali and I didn't have any other interaction. I felt like the light in my life had gone out. It didn't make any sense at all. Lavinia. Because she left me. You have the answer teddy bear. I don't suppose so. Time passed and one day in the last year of high school, I was passing by the place, then I heard the conversation of Vali and his brother. Vali. According to scientists, a unique event will occur tonight, and it happens every thousand years. When I heard their conversation I didn't know what was going to happen. What I did know was that I had to clear up the Vali matter once and for all. I wanted to know, I desperately wanted to know why he broke up with me years ago. My parents and their guards would be outside, it was my chance to get out. And so it was, but I was afraid to get closer, instead I saw Irina and Zenovia close to Issei. Good for them, at least someone is happy. Then it happened, the event that changed everything. I ran scared, I got away from the others, and as a result I paid the price. Lavinia. Don't come anymore. Regis. Regis. 
The last thing I saw of my first encounter with him was that he threw a ray of ice at me, freezing me. In the end I was trapped in an ice crystal. The worst thing of all was that I was conscious. I watched time pass, in the end I saw how everything was destroyed, I saw the nuclear explosion in person, and even then this ice was not destroyed. The years passed and somehow I ended up in the deepest part of the sea, all I could do was immerse myself in my thoughts. And I was still thinking about Vali. Lavinia. I loved him I wanted to be his wife his fiancé I wanted to be his, but why why did he leave me, maybe because I hid our love. Dot dot I'm not worthy of him. I don't know if thinking about Vali kept me saner or made me crazier, I felt like I was going to explode, until a miracle happened. Articuno. If I end up like this I'm going to die drowning in the deepest part of the sea, I guess that guy is already dead that boy too, how could he have Rayquaza? Dot dot his name was a say, I could hear his name heaven so many questions, and I'll die without answering them. Shock. Lavinia. Hey what is this a big bird? Articuno. But what is a human doing here? Lavinia. Can you speak? Articuno. I see you're frozen, but there are few ice that can keep you alive and conscious for years, apart from mine, but it doesn't matter I thought that Zapdos and Malters, by forming contracts with those humans, were degraded, but there's nothing degrading about trying to survive. Lavinia. What are you talking about? Articuno. Hey you you want to get out of that ice right I can get you out. Lavinia. I don't even know how long I've been here I don't even know what kind of bird this is, but if you can get me out of this prison I'll do whatever it takes. Articuno. You don't have to talk, the contract will say everything by itself. From that day on, I formed a contract with Articuno and managed to free myself from that prison. I have explained many things to me, like that he was now immortal and the Pokemon, in my mind he saw things. And he told me things, like that Issei was alive and that he was immortal too. If Issei was alive, then Vali had to be, but he couldn't go with him. He now had to be strong, very strong. I was not worthy of his love once, this time it would not happen again, I had to prove myself worthy of his love. To do this I would capture the Pokemon that caught me, and I would prove to him how strong I am. Articuno. Regis is part of a group of legendaries, which are a myth even among Pokemon, because no one has seen them again for a long time. Lavinia. No matter how much time passes, I will train along the way and dedicate myself to catching him. Time passed again, I understood everything about this new world, I heard news about Vali as the ages passed. I earned money, resources, but I remained isolated from society until the time came to become part of it. But to blend in better I decided to catch a common Pokemon to pretend, but I couldn't, it's assumed that if you're a carrier of a legendary Pokemon, no low-level Pokemon could resist, when I tried it my heart hurt. So I went to see a doctor, specialized in Pokemon stuff. Lavinia. What's wrong with me, doctor? Doctor. You suffer from type 2 disease. Lavinia. Disease of types. Doctor. As you know, there are different types of Pokemon. Type disease is a rare disease that appeared a long time ago. It is not well known because it is uncommon. Lavinia. And what does that disease do? Doctor. It makes you incompatible with different types of Pokemon, that is, you cannot make contracts with some types of Pokemon, but with others you can. Lavinia. And how can I know with which ones I can or cannot make contracts? Doctor. Easy we will do blood tests. The doctor did his tests on him, at the end he showed me the results. Lavinia. So? Doctor. Apparently you are only compatible with the ice type, not with the other types. Lavinia. But I have a Pokemon that is ice and flying type, why can I have a contract with it? Doctor. Well in that case, it depends more on the rarity of the Pokemon, the higher its rarity, the less effective the type disease will be, but the rarity must be very high, at least epic. Lavinia. That explains why Articuno was able to make the contract with me without any problems. Doctor. But not everything is bad, that disease brings the benefit of being stronger than anyone else, with that particular type, that is to say if your strength comes from the rarity of an epic Pokemon, thanks to that disease of yours, your strength will be equal to that of the pseudo-legendary or semi-legendary, even to that of the legendary, as you can see it is something incredible. You have a great future. Articuno. If what this doctor says is true, then the strength you can exert on me rivals that of mythical Pokemon. Lavinia. Do you know what kind of Regis it is? Articuno. It's ice, perfect for you. Lavinia. Smiles. Time passed, the search continued, and naturally the day arrived. Lavinia. Explore the outskirts of the ruin in advance, certain that it is the. Articuno. Its icy energy is unmistakable, it lies there. Lavinia. Then we just have to wait for them to reveal the information, and we'll pretend to be cannon fodder. Then they posted the announcement. Articuno. Are you sure about this? Lavinia. I sent a letter to Vali. Articuno. Do you think you'll see a letter from a stranger? Lavinia. 
She will, after all she will be interested in knowing who knows her location. Articuno. What do you expect to happen? Lavinia. When I have Regis, I will prove that I am worthy of being his fiancé. Articuno. Let's hope it turns out the way you want. I arrived at the ruins, I saw that Issei was there, with more girls, I didn't see Irina, I guess something must have happened to her, after all it wouldn't be for less, taking into account the number of years that have passed, I felt her inner power, Vali is right, she is a monster equal to or greater than him, she was always hiding her abilities. Articuno. Zenovia didn't recognize you. Lavinia. No wonder, many years passed and I was also held captive in ice, they should have given me up for dead a long time ago. Articuno. So what did we come for? They're following us, by the way. Lavinia. Don't worry, I'll take care of them quickly. Articuno. Then let's not delay any longer. In the present. Yes, I was alone for many years, captive because of a Pokemon, many years longing for love, now it's time to get that love. Shock. Blow. Regis would be thrown against the wall, causing a loud bang. Lavinia. Today I will settle old scores with you, in addition to getting what I always wanted. Chapter 36. We will meet again. Isaka. Things don't seem to be going well. Ravel. Yusaka we have to split up, I'll go tell Akeno and Rias, you go with Issei and Zenovia. Isaka. Okay. The two quickly transformed, in doing so both destroyed the walls in order to speed up their meeting. Zenovia. Did you hear that? Issei. If something is approaching quickly, it is Yusaka. Zenovia. Why is Yusaka coming here? Shock. Burst. Break. At that point the wall would break, revealing Yusaka transformed. Isaka. We have problems. Zenovia. What's wrong Yusaka? Isaka. This ruin is not normal, it has a legendary Pokemon. Issei. What? Isaka. I'll explain it quickly. With Rias and Akeno. Akeno. This room is finished, where do we keep the jewels? Rias. I don't know, my pockets don't stretch to that much. Akeno. Let's take what we can and leave the rest here, we'll come back later for the... Shock. Burst. Break. At that moment Ravel crossed the wall enveloped in fire. Rias. Ravel what are you doing here? Akeno. What's going on? Ravel. We're in trouble, we need to meet up with the others quickly. With the say. Zenovia. But how can there be a legendary Pokemon in this place, and why didn't we notice? The say. Some legendary Pokemon hide their energy very well, if that is the case normally only people or Pokemon with a similar type can detect them. Isaka. Regis is the one who inhabits this ruin, he is an ice type, that means that someone with an ice type Pokemon found him. Elsewhere. The fight between Lavinia and Regis would continue, she had thrown him against the wall. Lavinia. It seems you are not as tough as I thought. Regis. You humans are always annoying. Lavinia. I see you finally designed to speak. Regis. I just thought talking to humans was irrelevant. Lavinia. Do you remember me? Regis. Yes. You were the last human I saw before coming back here, how many years have passed, hundreds, thousands or maybe millions. Lavinia. I was trapped in your ice for years, fully conscious, you know the hell I went through. Regis. That is the price humans must pay, for impressing me, my brothers and my creator. Articuno. The humans of our world died long ago Regis, these humans belong to another world. Regis. I'm not an idiot Articuno, do you think I wouldn't notice the earthly changes, after so many years? Articuno. So you knew. Regis. Yes, but that doesn't change anything, a human is still a human, there is no difference. Articuno. If that's your way of seeing the world, that's your problem. Regis. I see that this girl was able to free herself thanks to you, I didn't expect that you would have degraded yourself. Articuno. There is nothing degrading about wanting to survive. Lavinia. Enough talk, I will collect the old dead I have with you, when I'm done you will be my Pokemon. Regis. Never I will never be used by a human. Lavinia. We'll see about that. With the say. Tremble. The say. The tremors are getting stronger and stronger. Then Rias, Akeno and Ravel would arrive. Rias. Everyone is fine. Zenovia. For now yes. Akeno. We have to get out of here. Ravel. There are still people in ruin. The say. It's true, just as there are bad people, there are also good people who have no idea of the danger they are in. Zenovia. You're right, we must help them. Shock. Break. At that moment the ground under Issei's feet would open, Issei would quickly jump avoiding falling. Ravel. We have to hurry, this place is falling apart fast. Rias. Hey, Issei, what's that shining at your feet? Quickly everyone opened their eyes wide, Issei was scared when he saw this, he immediately hit the ground with his fist, it was covered with energy. Issei. Damn, I was careless. Ravel. Issei, you're fine. 
Bisay. Listen to me quickly and don't interrupt. Brias. Hey. Bisay. I fell into a teleportation trap, so I don't know where I'm going to end up, fortunately I reacted in time and was able to slow down the process, I will give you instructions before I leave. Ravel. You can't. Bisaka. Ravel is right, according to the murals those traps connect to places inhabited by legendary Pokemon. Ravel. You can't expect to appear out of nowhere and not be attacked, but the territory may not be in your favor. Rias. But with Issei's power he surely won't have any problems. Issei. No I will have. Rias. What? Issei. Right now I'm using my energy to stop an instant teleportation circle, I'm literally interfering with space, this will cause instability in the internal energy of my body, so I won't be able to transform until some time has passed, apart from my superhuman physical capabilities and my immortality in the face of aging, I won't have anything else. Rias. Then how can you be so calm? Issei. I'll know how to sneak out or get out of this, but I'll have to be playing defense. Rias. How will we find you? Issei. They will find a way, for now I will give them the necessary instructions. Akeno. What do we do? Issei. Ravel, Akeno and Rias, evacuate those who are in these ruins, you can use the power of your legendary Pokémon to speed up the process, as for Yusaka and Zenovia, you go outside the ruin to clear the way. Zenovia. By chance. Issei. If I mean that, the people outside don't plan to welcome those who come out of the ruin with open arms, then it's better if they eliminate them in advance. Isaka. Okay. Issei. Well I guess I'll be waiting for them wherever they are. After that the teleportation circle would activate, making Issei disappear in front of them. Isaka. Come on, we have work to do. Elsewhere. Low. Shock. Low. Regis. Damn human. Lavinia. Did you think I was going to attack you with ice type attacks? Please, I'm not stupid. Articuno has a repertoire of varied movements. I wouldn't say it's extensive, but at least they can cause you damage. Regis. You will be. Lavinia. The game is over. Articuno. Regis, I'll tell you just out of consideration, make the contract for good, she's willing to do anything, even a forced contract. Regis. Haha. In the end you're telling me that this is my only option. Articuno. Yes. Regis. How dare you. Articuno. You should know that at this point, you can't win. Regis. Take your pity somewhere else. Articuno. It's not pity, as I told you, it's consideration if in the end the result is not going to change, don't you think it's better to do things yourself, instead of having someone else do them? Regis. What can I gain by doing that? Articuno. Keep a little dignity. Regis. There really is no way out. Articuno. No. It's your only way out. Regis. Ha. Human. What is your name? Lavinia. My name is Lavinia Renai. Regis. Lavinia. Well you win. I have no other choice after all. But in exchange I want the opportunity to ask you for a favor in the future, if you grant me that, I will not give you any trouble. Lavinia. How do you know that I will accept and not lie? Regis. When I make the contract, I will be inside you, I will know if your promise is true or false. Lavinia. Fortunately for you, I don't make false promises. I agree that in the future I will grant you any favor you want. Regis. Thank you. Immediately a light appeared, illuminating the entire place and a chant was heard throughout the ruin. In the snowy valley who will find me? The deepest ice layers who have to cross them. Well, it's you. You who were born in the coldest place. You who crossed the blizzards. You have arrived at the place you wanted to be. Come to me. I take you as my partner. The snow lady. The princess of eternal ice. Lavinia. Interesting, this way feels good. Articuno. Due to your high compatibility for type disease, the power you can wield with Regis is undoubtedly overwhelming. Elsewhere. While Rias, Akeno and Ravel evacuated the others, Yusaka and Zenovia arrived outside to fight, they knew the men outside had no good intentions. But they got a surprise when everything outside was destroyed, there were no traces of Gabriel and his men. Instead there was only one person, a man standing in the middle of blood and flames. Seeing him, Yusaka could feel a shiver run through her body, because that guy was powerful. Zenovia recognized him instantly, and when he saw her he also recognized her. Zenovia. Okay. Ali. Impossible. You are Zenovia. Isaka. That's Issei's brother. Ali. Issei my brother is here. Isaka and Zenovia slowly walk towards Vali. Isaka. I can feel an overwhelming power coming from him. Ali. I have many questions seeing you Zenovia, but I will leave them for later for now tell me what is important. Zenovia. There is a legendary Pokémon in the ruin, there are teleportation traps, and Issei fell into one of them. Ali. I understand. Isaka. 
But he stopped the teleportation trap so. Ollie. Don't say any more. That fool always does crazy things, wherever he is you can trust that he will survive. Isaka. The ruin is coming down, our friends are helping to evacuate. Ollie. What happened to the legendary Pokemon? Isaka. I guess the person must still be fighting with him, although by reaching that room the ruin is collapsing, possibly that person won't be able to get out. Ollie. Thanks, I'll take care of that person then. Isaka. Hey. You know her. Ollie. Let's say I received a letter. Zenovia. Volley's attitude seems different, I would say it's because of the time we haven't seen each other, but it's not that, it's something else as if there was something sentimental involved. Isaka. The ruin will collapse soon, how will you get out? Bali. Don't worry, I have my methods. Bali immediately shot into the ruins enveloped in a ray of light. Ria's, Ravel and Akeno saw him pass by as they were near the ruins exit. Elsewhere. Lavinia. It's time to go. Regis. This place is falling apart, did you set off a trap when you came in? Lavinia. I was careful, it's more like its destruction was planned. Regis. I see so she did this as a security measure no wonder. Lavinia. Her. Regis. Nobody important. Articuno. I'm sorry about your plans Lavinia, but you won't have time to leave. Lavinia. I know, but it doesn't matter, I'll see Vali again another time. Articuno. Do you have a way out? Lavinia. Of course, using the traps to our advantage. Lavinia would immediately set off towards a teleportation trap. Articuno. This is. Regis. I never thought you would use a trap as an escape. Articuno. It's ingenious. Regis. Not entirely, these traps connect to dangerous places, I only warn you of one thing Lavinia, you must pray that the place we are going to is empty, because if the owner is present, there will be problems. Lavinia. What do you mean? Regis. You'll know when you get there. Lavinia immediately placed her foot in the teleportation circle, the trap immediately activated. But at that moment someone approached. Select. Lavinia. Lavinia. Hey. Articuno. That's the one. Lavinia. So. If you came. Smiles. Lavinia reached out her hand, but the trap was activated, making her disappear before Vali's eyes. All he could grab onto was empty air as everything fell apart. Vali. Damn. No. It's not time for that. I have to get out of here. I promise I'll find you, no matter where or when. At that moment a blue sphere formed around Vali, disappearing from the ruin. Outside everyone was safe, people managed to get out in time. The girls, on the other hand, still had work to do. Rias. Did you meet Issei's brother? Isaka. Yes, he was here, he was that ray of light, but I think he's already gone. Zenovia. Being Issei's brother, you can trust that he is safe. Ravel. Now we have to go. Akeno. Yes, we should look for Issei. Rias. They're right, we don't know where he could be, we only know that he won't be able to defend himself, if the place where he ended up is very dangerous, all the more reason we should find him, right now anyone could kill Issei. Elsewhere. Issei was lying on a grassland, his gaze was indifferent. Issei. What was I doing I mean I was doing something. What are you thinking about? Issei. I don't remember I have to go somewhere. Maybe you just dreamed it. Issei. True, after all this is my house, where would I go? True, this is your world, a perfect world. Issei. Thanks. You're welcome, after all in the world of truth, nothing is bad. Issei. I really appreciate it Arena. Arena. There's nothing to be thankful for, darling. Arc 3. Beyond Illusions. Finished. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.